Welcome to Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Y'all got to put your running shoes on for this one. <laughs> Lace them up. Yes. Because I already know it's about to be insane. The husbands are back for part two. We got Will in the house. We got Ezekiel in the house. And we about to run a single men. Stay tuned. Get your notepads. We in here. Welcome to Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. I can already tell, man. It's going to be a powerful one right here. You need to watch, too. I, like <laughs> I discovered porn when I was a child. My mom. To get that white man's option out of his pursuit, me, I ran. But I won, don't get it. This is dope. You need to have a person. There you go. Is this guy now? Yes, it is that time, family. It is that time. The brothers came back for part two. They are here again. Y'all already know. My real initiates, y'all know who these brothers in. Will Jackson and Ezekiel is back in here to put us on game. Lit the set on fire last time. Listen. And the brothers are back. How y'all feeling, brothers? Listen, the Chiefs ain't the only ones that's going back to back. We, we running it back. We running it back. So, we, we need that energy, man. Listen. We need that. Man, I'm hyped because I seen we made the intro. We made the intro. We famous now. Fact, that's, look, you y'all upgrade every time we come through. That's what I'm talking about. I'll be honest, man. Y'all y'all had, you know, definitely one of my top five episodes. We got a, I mean, our catalog is maybe over, I mean, 350 videos. Yeah. So, I mean, wow, top wow. five instant hardly initiated classic wow. yeah and not just because yeah. of the viewership and the engagement which was tremendous wow. but because of the impact the amount of emails yeah. and DMS and instant messages that we got on Facebook was incredible wow. and from yeah. and from man bro I see I like to bring men on the show that other men respect mm. definitely that other men respect and will hold in reverence because to keep a brother on a uh, to watch in a podcast about personal development, not money, not mm -hmm. sex, mm -hmm. but personal development for three hours. That's a feat. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And y'all brothers did that. Man. So we had to run it back Man. for a part two. So big shout out to these brothers on here because we about to run it back here again. Yeah. Thank y'all for having us. Thank y'all for super real, for excited, real. man. This yeah. feels like home now. Now yeah. it's now it's just <laughs> we're, we're it's so comfortable. It was comfortable last time. We had just this natural energy yeah. in the room that you know it's just you don't find that everywhere. Yeah, you know some yeah. places you go and it's tight and it's like I can't wait to get out of here. Yeah. We could have stayed for two more additional hours. Yeah. You know? I Facts. believe it. Yeah, Facts. I mean, yeah, it was it was like that. Yeah, yeah. We, we let y'all get some sleep. We was good. <laughs> <laughs> we let y'all get some sleep. But tonight, I told them. <clears throat> Run the shoe. Excuse me, y'all. Tonight, we actually get into it. I actually want to go ahead and let's talk about our episode sponsor before we get this thing popped off, man, because it's about to yo, happen. Yo, Lano, hit, cue, cue us up, Lano. Again, that's what I like. Another one. Shout out to the episode sponsor, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Guys, I don't know if you heard, but you heard it here first. Your boy has been in the gym. Yes. And this is the thing, though. When you're in the gym, the big dog has to eat. So no more staring into an empty refrigerator with an empty stomach with nothing but foreign fresh ingredients delivered to your door. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> Hello Fresh is going to hold you down. I promise you that. Hey man, listen, that's the thing about me. I, I hate shopping, but I absolutely love a home cooked meal. So that's the thing about Hello Fresh, y'all. They're going to save you the time, they're going to save you the energy. So I can have that healthy home cooked meal without one trip to that grocery store. Yes, eat better and stress less. Like I told you guys, HelloFresh is packed with the absolutely freshest, farm freshest ingredients for you to get your meal plan right. And guys, listen, let HelloFresh save you time, energy, and money by giving you all, all right? By giving you all subscribers free breakfast for life, all right? Free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy an absolute free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery, all right? Now, they wanted to make sure we get this in because this is the action, guys. So... Go to HelloFresh.com slash Initiate Free and use code Initiate Free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Initiate Free with code Initiate Free. Bam. Game time, baby. That was smooth. Absolutely. <laughs> <was> Absolutely. <laughs> and y'all made me hungry. Yeah. Hey, listen, listen. You got to eat right, y'all. So we gave it to you here. Now I want to actually go back and get into this game that we are about to talk about because this is going to be a powerful episode. In fact, there has been a very um, impactful video that's been floating around the internet. 
And I actually want to get you brothers take on this moment with Shaquille O'Neal. I got the extended version of this video so we can even get some context. Mm. So let's get right into it. It's like a relationship. The day you fall off, that woman ain't as interested as you think. Yeah, once you start complaining and dragging your feet. She don't want to hear no complaint. The day you come home and think you could be like, baby, I was down, I lost it. She gonna, like, she gonna be stroke your ego, but she gonna remember that time. You, you cannot let them see you one time mm. down. The world can't see your head down one time. Ever. So I, I'd tell people I want up. you both to know that they, you can. No. Like, and I, I know that you've experienced. Cannot. I don't want to get to like Dr. Phil shit right now. <clears throat> no, but you I don't think, think you've ever had something that you really could trust and really open up. Now, if you want to keep it now, if you want to give somebody else some coochie all the time, you know what I'm saying, I'm saying, if you want to, if you want a bad one, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just being real. Oh, no, I guess. You open up to a woman? Yeah. Never. No, never. When's the last time you think you've opened up to a woman? We don't. In your whole life? Bro, I'm telling you. They Man, got players like, like I, I couldn't, <laughs> men related. Yeah. It's our first time meeting, yeah, but I, I did. Tell you yeah, guys, yeah, there's no, some connection here. Oh, no. And they're going to tell you you can't. Because you know why? But it's a trap. Because you know why? I'm trapped no, no. like a motherfucker. No, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because <laughs> once you do, when something go down, they're going to throw it back in your face. Well, that's I've had that's that. That's why. That's why. So you can't ever. That's why you cry because your dad yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fellas was talking right there. <laughs> the fellas was talking. <laughs> as soon as you're vulnerable, mm. they're going to throw it right back in your face. Mm. And I can't say that was Shaq. I actually appreciate Shaq keeping it real and being honest because what he communicated, I know a lot of other brothers feel that way. So what he said was not just this crazy thing. Oh my God, I can't believe he said it. No, that's the state of a lot of men right now. A lot of men feel that they can't be honest with women for whatever reason, but them having their emotions or that vulnerability, that weak spot thrown right back at them, a lot of guys are feeling that way. And the thing about it is for context, right? You guys have been married and I mean, you got even some experience, Will, because you came in and told us last time. I think right now you're actually on your second marriage, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And Zeke, what about you? I'm on my first marriage. <laughs> okay. I'm, on marriage. I'm not said, crazy. Said, hey, hey, no bad juju. Hey, hey. No bad juju. Right, right. Said, 15 years. I'm my one and only. Yeah. Yeah. But 15, so I can imagine the level of vulnerability that you've had to have over a 15 year span. Yeah. So uh, you brothers are very qualified to come in here and have this conversation, uh, you know, because I'm sure you had had some tough conversations with women. Should you be vulnerable with your lady? Yes or no? I'm going to let him start and then I'll follow. We'll yeah, start this you off got, with You've got the, <laughs> probably the best real life experience that I think. So for me, this is, this is my perspective. One, I think where men first have to start is considering the source, right? Like... If I'm going to create a space of vulnerability, I think one, when I look at the clip, it's so many layers that when I hear them talking and when I hear a lot of men who have this perspective, what I hear is um, a place where that is not healed. I hear a place that hasn't been to a space where they have not healed to the degree of understanding that vulnerability wasn't the issue, it was the person that you were vulnerable with. And when you haven't healed, you start associating the person with the the thing that you were actually trying to do. You start associating that, okay, because I was vulnerable here once and this person threw it back in my face, what men have a tendency to do is to say, I will never be vulnerable again. Mm -hmm. And then we take this isolated incident, even if, even if it's over two, three or four different times, we take these isolated incidents and we start applying them to all women. So then I take a, a isolated incident, incident, I make a generalization, and then one now I'm applying it to every interaction. And what it really says is I haven't healed from these isolated incidents. So I mean, vulnerability for me, I think if we have true relationship, there has to be a level of vulnerability. Otherwise, it's not a true partnership. It's not a relationship. It's more of I am trying to fulfill your needs, but keeping you on the outskirts of who I really am. Because if I can't be vulnerable with you, you really don't know me. Mm. So if, if, if I have an outer shell that's protected, like when I listen to these, these gentlemen talking, and a lot of men who feel this way, 
it's a level of protection that keeps me insulated from being hurt again. And that just shows that I haven't healed yet. Because once I've healed to the, to the true degree where now that is not something that's defining how I'm interacting, then I can be the full version of myself in this next interaction. But what happens is we go into this situation, we get broken, mm. and we don't come back out and heal the pieces that were broken here. Mm -hmm. So now I enter into my next situation fragmented. So now this person still has this part of me, which is why now I'm associating this incident with this new person. I'll never be vulnerable again with a woman because mm. this woman threw it back up in my face when I was at my lowest. Mm. And we're not handled or wired to handle stuff from an emotional standpoint, really. We're more logical, so it makes sense. Okay, if I did this and didn't work, I won't do it again. Mm. But if I'm in a space where I know that that was just an isolated incident, even if it's just, it, like I said, even if it's multiple, if it's two, three, four, five, there are how many people on the earth? Billions? Yeah. And for me to say that three, four, five incidents is going to shape how I'm going to act moving forward mm. lets me know I haven't healed. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a, it's a place of I'm keeping myself protected because with vulnerability, you create access. Mm. And with access, you give power. So when I'm vulnerable, I'm relinquishing power. And it's to the place of knowing that you, you may have the opportunity to use that as ammunition, mm. but if I've done the work to first make sure that I'm not in a place to be connected to a person who has the qualities or capabilities to throw something back up in my face, mm. that is how I protect myself. Mm. Not in the essence of me being vulnerable. I become more intentional about my choices mm. because if you're the type of person that's going to throw something back up in my face, I've seen you in your character before we've gotten together. There you go. I've seen how you move. Right. I've seen that you're petty. I've seen that you're in a space where you may be a little nitpicky and you like to do stuff where you like to throw stuff back. I've seen how you talk to your friends. I've heard you gossip. So I see your character. Come on. So once I see your character, that should be the barometer of if you're somebody I can be vulnerable with, mm. not vulnerability within itself. Come on. Now, <laughs> let me let me ask you this, Will, because I'm yeah. I'm also being very considerate of who the people actually are. So yeah. just looking at the, the three guys, mm -hmm. you got the two black men, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, and you know, both Shaq and Country Wayne, I mean, whether it's, you know, Shaq basketball or when it comes to the media personality, yeah. both top of the game. Yes. Okay. So. I mean, and I'm, I just would imagine that these successful guys have had ample opportunity at all types of women across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you telling me that is that many women who don't have good character? No, I'm not saying that it's that the women have good character. I would like to trace back their first instance mm. where they got hurt and they said they'll never do it again mm. because where they got hurt, where the onset was, they insulated themselves there, and every woman moving forward gets gets a protective version. That makes sense. So they might not have even attempted vulnerability no. at these with these other women. That's what they said. It's like you you never do never. never. <laughs> right. That's a good point. So you may have come across several women who have the capabilities, but I'm treating every woman as if you are this woman or this situation. Because even it may not even be that it's a woman that hurt you. It may not even be that it's a woman that hurt you. It could be a situation that you got hurt because you trusted a family member. Yeah. Mm. Or you were trusted, you know, that life was going to turn out in your favor. And you kept having, you know, tough time after tough time. You know, if we're going to get real, it may have been in situations where you trusted God to do something. Yeah. Mm. And it appeared like he didn't do what he said he was going to do. And then you insulate. And then now everyone is getting this protective version. Mm. So it's, it's almost like, you know, they, they do the studies and talk, uh, talk about in the, the in neuroscience and neural pathways. When someone gets hurt or experiences a traumatic event, there's a stunt there mm. that keeps them from emotionally growing until they heal in this place. So a lot of us are moving through life with underdeveloped emotional states because we haven't gone back to heal where it first happened. So that's my question would be, okay, have you ever 
Have you ever, because, and even if it's not from a place of where you got hurt, it could be a place that that's what somebody taught you, that another man taught you. You don't be vulnerable to no woman. And you grow within this mindset. So how much was it, was your experience? Was it taught to you? I just, I just would like to know the source, the source of where you got this from. Was it taught or have you had real life experiences? And then it's the difficulty of when men reach that level of success. Come on. When you reach that level of success, women become more of an accessory and not a necessity. So now they're expendable. Mm. So I really don't find the value in creating a space where I am looking at this as an actual partnership, relationship, marriage, where I'm building something with you, where we are going to come together. Because now, when a man becomes successful and he reaches a place of success, and if he has done it without a woman, oftentimes a man now is insulated in his success. Mm. So now whatever you gotta say is, I really don't care what you have to say because I'm successful. And that's where a man finds his identity. And it's, it's a real thing. Um, I think it's so easy as men to look at men who excel in certain areas of life and say they have excelled in certain areas, but you have to pay attention to where they've excelled. Yeah. Oftentimes a, a good sign of brokenness is men that can't help but run to where the applause is. Mm. So a lot of insecure people, you find themselves so passionate about racing to the places where they can be revered, honored, respected, and celebrated. That's why you see some people not even being able to let go of their young self when they had the little sideburns and when they had, man, like you drop it. You ain't in hip hop no more. They can't let it go because this is the only version of me that was fed, that was nurtured. This was the only version of me that I allowed you to see. So imagine mm. how malnourished and underdeveloped the person, the, the authentic person could be or are. I'm thinking of, um, I imagine them as these giant facades or these men that wear these huge masks that have only allowed their masks to be polished, to be seen, mm -hmm. to, be, to be touched, and they go home malnourished, weak. Wounds that have been wounds are still putrid and funky from mm -hmm. 12 years old, from high school, from the girl that broke their heart, from in college, from the person who said that they weren't gonna be nothing, from the person who betrayed their trust. I imagine that they're this, they're still this 19 year old broken boy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And they've tried to use their success as a mask to allow that to be fed. And they get bigger and bigger in the eyes of those who can't discern. And for every woman who can't discern or who has no interest in seeing the real them, is okay with never gaining intimacy with that person. And they're living lives, never knowing what intimacy is. Before you ever enter a space of intimacy, what happens when you get with your woman? You take off clothes. It's literally the prerequisite for intimacy is removing clothes. So the authentic version of yourself has to be able to relinquish something. I have to let you sh see what I'm ashamed of in public. I have to have a space where I could come to you and be the real me, the true me. And that's why I believe my relationship works well because when I come to stages like this, they clap, they snap, and they say, that's an amazing man. But they only saw 30 minutes on a podcast. Mm -hmm. They only saw 22 minutes on a stage. They only saw a recorded clip that I rehearsed 14 times and deleted the ones that I didn't want y'all to see. Mm. That's big. Mm. Is I delete the ones that- I deleted Ooh. the ones I didn't want y'all to see, but when I come home, I don't have an opportunity to delete my flaws. Mm. I don't have an opportunity to delete the areas that I hid from the world, so I have to show, what can you do with that? And this is why I, I talked about it the first time. You gotta have a friend in this mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. See, and that's why people are so easily divorce each other. It's like, man, I, I could walk away from a woman that I'm just getting sex from. Transactional. But it is not that easy for me to walk away from my homie. Yeah. That that I, I he knows me. I know him. We walked through this thing together. We done went through the trenches together. My wife is my dog. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, when we don't got when we don't see no beauty in each other because we just that mad or we're just that broken, that's my dog. I'm gonna cry with you. I'm gonna let you know what's going on. Because they're dealing on a surface level, she's only dealt with his mask and he's only allowed her to. 
And so they never had intimacy. And, mm. and I've been that guy. I went through so much of my life where I felt like I was protecting myself because I had been hurt. And I became a master at giving people what they needed without giving them me. Come on, bro. And it wasn't until like I got to the place like when I met my wife and she challenged me because as men, we, we know how to facilitate transactions. So you can get into a place where you can give somebody what they want and they're happy. And I was content living off of other people's happiness. Wow. And it wasn't until she challenged me and she literally told me, she said, let me be your teammate. And that one comment pierced me in a way that, that let me know that she wasn't going to let me just go through doing everything that I can for her. Because even in situations like successful men, when you talk about the, t the quality of women that you're talking to, if she's going to be okay with just trips and bags and financial things, she's never going to do the work to even want to know you deeper because she's getting what she needs, right? But if we're in a space where somebody is saying, no, none of that stuff matters. Come on. Like, I, I want to know you, Come even on. if you can keep all this. Yeah. You can keep all that. But can we get to a place where we know each other on a deeper level? What are you, and she challenged me, what are you willing to take off? And it wasn't an it wasn't a easy feat at first because I was so okay with just, I'll give them what they need there, I'll give them what they need there. I know how to operate in this space. I know how I became a chameleon, an mm. emotional chameleon. Mm. And I knew how to operate, but it, it's, it's getting to a space where I realized also that I hadn't healed. And I was functional, but I wasn't healed. Dang. So well, I wanna ask this, cause I wanna give the brother some tangible game. Yeah. Because I think there's a, a real strategic way to do this vulnerability thing, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> Where you can express your vulnerable fears, your concerns, your thoughts in a masculine fashion. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Because I think when, when, when brothers imagine themselves being vulnerable, like they, 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 I don't even know if they have a good picture of exactly what being vulnerable with a woman looks like. Mm especially for a man that's never even ventured there. Yeah. Like, like when you think about the hardest conversations you've ever had, if you could just think about those real quick with your lady. Yeah. Most men have never even gotten close mm -hmm. to those conversations, mm -hmm. whether because they haven't achieved that level of depth with a woman or they just are nowhere near comfortable having or going there. Mm -hmm. So when you consider that, what does it look like to be vulnerable with my woman in a masculine way. I think the term being vulnerable in a masculine way almost makes it seem like there is a path that so, so society and um, culture has created for us to walk in that looks masculine and it dictates how vulnerability should look like. I don't think, I don't think that we get vulnerability from this world. You know, I'm, you know, I'm come from God. Mm -hmm. Like when, God established Adam and Eve in the garden. He created them naked and they were unashamed in the garden, right? And so it's this idea that masculinity is, is, is proof that the truest form, the naked form of you is the right form of you. So vulnerability is already in and of itself. It doesn't have to be painted a particular way. It doesn't have to sound a particular way. And my friend says something that I truly believe, the one for you will be graced for your level of vulnerability. That means the person that is right for you is going to know how to handle your heart and your expression and your vulnerability. So I'm, what I'm not going to try to do is be like, well, what I'm really trying to say is, I'm not trying to put on, mm -hmm. see, if, if, the, <clears throat> if the goal is to take off the mask, then we're gonna take, take off the off. mask. Yeah. I'm not gonna try to create or conjure this form, well, this is, masculine vulnerability for you. No, nah, this is really me. This is what I'm going through. And if you're really for me, if you're really, if you're really my friend, 
you'll know how to accept it and that you're not going to betray me. You're not going to throw it back in my face. You, I'm, you're going to be a safe space for this vulnerability. I always talk about, we always talk about vulnerability and we separate that from insecurity. Do you know what the word, the, the root word for insecure is? Unsafe if you define it. So what does, what does it mean if I'm not able to be vulnerable with my spouse, with my woman, then I feel unsafe being my true self with my woman. How crazy does that sound? That means you will live with a woman 10, 20 years. You put a ring on her finger. You don't have babies with her. You don't know the inside of her body with your body, but you can't be the real you in her presence. You can't take off the mask. I know you got to go when y'all doing your Harley initiated. You got you on you on you on honey, but there are days when in the back of your mind, you know, you got a lot on your plate mm -hmm. and you really don't feel it, but you got to put on for everybody else. There got to be a moment in your life where you could come home, toss everything down and say, look, it was hard today. Mm -hmm. And it, it should be safe to be that way. Those, those, the, the word insecure, just because in, you, you, uh, we're identifying this being unsafe doesn't mean that you're unsafe everywhere. There are places and people that you feel unsafe with. God forbid that be the person that you lay your head with every night. Yeah. Mm. And so to that point, what I first started is, like you said, is defining vulnerability as masculine or feminine, right? Like, because we have a, because imagery determines your interaction, because mm -hmm. we've already set the precipice of that being vulnerable is synonymous with weakness. Every man has a tendency to refrain from it, right? Because we've classified vulnerability in the same bubble with weakness. So even the thought to be vulnerable makes a man say, I can't, because it goes against my foundational core principles of who I'm supposed to be as a man, right? So my question, and then I'll give you some tangible things that I think that we can do in terms of to apply vulnerability. When you think of a man, what characteristics do you think? Courageous, strong, leadership, discipline, mm -hmm. responsible, focus, in integrity. Yeah. So all of those are words, power words. Right. Right. So when we're thinking about men, mm. that it's synonymous. We think power. Right. So I think first, before we can get into aspects of being vulnerable, we need to first identify safe spaces mm. because if this is somebody that I'm dating or I'm connected to or I'm in relationship with and and they have proven to be unsafe, mm. then I have to do the prudent thing of protecting this vulnerable space because everybody don't get access to this vulnerable space. So I got to first do the, the, the legwork of figuring out, is this someone that I can be vulnerable with? Mm. Is this a safe space? And sometimes you have to figure that out over time. You got to figure out, okay, have these conversations to where I see how you handle tough conversations. Yes. It doesn't even have to be vulnerable for me. I want to figure out how you handle tough conversations. That's number one. So what are the things <laughs> when we're talking about difficult things, how do you respond? Mm. Are you quick tempered? Are you in a space where you are easily triggered by certain things? Because that's another thing. I can't really fully be vulnerable with somebody who hasn't healed. Because if I'm vulnerable in my vulnerability, and if I say something in my emotional state of vulnerability that triggers an unhealed place in you, you are going to respond incorrectly, which is going to shut me down even deeper. Yes. Because once I open it, see women, when, when they open emotionally, they do like this. When men open emotionally, we do this. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a crack. And however mm -hmm. you treat this crack is going to determine if I'm going to lock this down in this Fort Knox mm -hmm. and we never going to open again, mm -hmm. or if I'm going to actually come open a little more, mm -hmm. right? So I got to consider the source. I got to see how you handle difficult conversations. Yeah. And then if I'm not comfortable in this place, one of the things I think that men need to start doing is setting up the moment, right? Because men are synonymous with power, a lot of times a vulnerable moment comes deep into a relationship and it comes off almost as a culture shock. Mm. We've been together for two years and this is your first moment of vulnerability wow. and I've only seen you in strong and power and, and then you come in completely different. What sometimes the response could be is shock. Like, I've never seen this. Like, whoa, 
Like this is a whole new you, right? So if we can start trying to be more open early, mm. then I don't create a space where it throws you off guard. Because if I hit you with just one day, I break because I'm holding so much. Because when men break, we break ugly. Like it's not, it's not a, you know, okay, let me finally express to you how I'm talking. Like we like break because we've internalized so much. And when we reach that boiling point, it just spills over. So if I can start being vulnerable in places earlier, it's not a culture shock. But then also, if I'm not familiar in the space, what men have a hard time doing is saying, I'm not familiar in this place. Like if I can start a vulnerable conversation by saying, okay, listen, I want to share something with you, but I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I'm not comfortable being vulnerable. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to navigate an emotional space. I'm a, I might start talking. I may start crying. I don't know because I'm not used to being vulnerable, right? So I, I, I need you to give me a little grace. I need you to be more in tune to what I'm saying and, you know, hear my heart because this is new for me, mm -hmm. right? One of the things that we do as men is we enter every situation like we've been there before and we've mastered it. So if I can start setting it up, like, hey, I really, I need to talk to you, but before I even talk, like, mm. let me, let me, let me let you know, okay, I want to talk to you about something that's deep. It's, it's, it's weighing on me and I can't hold it anymore, but I'm not used to this. This mm. is foreign for me. I'm not used to talking about my emotions. I'm not used to opening up. So I don't know how this conversation is going to go. Mm. I may start crying. I may get angry. I don't know. Right. So now if I if I've set the moment up and given the moment of introduction, at least I've armed her with enough wisdom to say, OK, we entering into foreign territory. Mm -hmm. So he's he's he was he's I'm. And then if you set it up to say we're going to enter in this moment because I trust you. Mm. I'm trusting you with this moment. Right mm. now, it gives the moment a whole new weight because now she's like. Okay, while well, he's about to be vulnerable, he really trusts me. Mm. Like this is a different type of depth, which every woman craves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now you create a space where she has an option or an opportunity. And this is where we're going to see where the real character comes out. Mm -hmm. Because now I've set it up for you. I've laid the moment out. I've done the work to watch you. And now when I'm entering into this place, I don't feel like I have to be masculine. And I don't feel like I have to be perfect. I'm, this is this is foreign territory for me, because when a man starts actually talking about emotions and it starts peeling back the layers, that thing's it norm the normal the normalcy of us peeling back layers is that it's deep. Mm -hmm. So when we start peeling back layers, it's not just going to be this one situation. We're going to peel back this layer and uncover fifty two more layers. Mm -hmm. And once we start that dive. It's hard to just pull it back up and say, I'm going to be strong. No. Because once I start opening it up and right. it starts spewing out. It's too late. Man, it's a mm. snowball effect. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got to be like aware of how. And if you don't feel like that your woman is, is strong enough or equipped enough or if, or if you don't know if you have the capability to, then go talk to a therapist first. Mm -hmm. Start somewhere that is safe, mm -hmm. right? Like getting the habit. How do you express these emotions? Like talk when you talk. If you're going, if you that's why you got brothers too. If we don't talk, we talk about real life, not just man. I'm killing it. I'm doing this. My successes. No. How do I actually be vulnerable in a sp in a space? And I've tried it and I've tested it. And then it's my last thing. And then we can open back up the conversation. Is that at the same time, you do have to be aware of the the magnitude of the weight of what you're about to share mm. is that while this may be a heavy vulnerable space this could shape our relationship differently mm -hmm. right this could it's there's it's always the what ifs this could actually be but on the other side of whatever it is you're going to come out stronger you're going to come out more equipped, even if it has. We 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 don't want to take the the deep dive of going down into the valley to reach another high mountaintop. 
Mm. We want to go from mountain to mountain. Mm. And in order for us to grow, we got to go down in this valley mm. because I got to come down off this mountain. We got to get stronger down here. So we are strong enough for this climb that we're about to take place. Mm. So it's, it, those are some of the things that I think that you got to be in a space where you got to know who you're talking to, consider the source, because if she's not that type of person, don't set yourself up for that. Don't set yourself up. If she is not a person who's going to handle you being vulnerable, then you need to know that early on. Mm -hmm. And don't set yourself up. Because if she's not and you do it, then that's on you too at the same time. Mm -hmm. I have to have a level of transparency with myself to know also, mm -hmm. am I connected to someone who's strong enough to handle my weakness? Mm -hmm. So I, I got some questions about yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the other side of the, of the mm -hmm. equation, which mm -hmm. is the woman. Mm -hmm. But I do want to review these three things because that was like a mini master class right there. <laughs> Straight up. Damn sure yeah. was. Straight Straight up. I mean, that, I don't Straight know if that up. was 12 to 15 minutes, but you can cut that up. <laughs> That's all you need because, and I want to go over these. So it's sounding like, but like this my notes. Yeah. You should start slow. Right, that's what it sounds like. It's a build up, mm -hmm. kind of you, you, you testing some things, testing some conversations to kind of mm -hmm. see if this is a, a safe space. Yes. Okay. Number two, it seems like timing is a huge part of this thing. Yeah. Like considering, is this woman ready? Is this the right time? Right. Yeah. And then I got number three is you understanding or evaluating what is the impact or severity of this level of vulnerability that we about to take it to right now. Yeah. Those are great. I mean, those are great uh, takeaways. I was okay. just going to add is knowing how to uh, set up the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like is knowing how to to give give your vulnerability an introduction. That preface. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's like a, yes. a sales tactic. That was honestly, that was some tangible game. There. That yeah. was really good. That was very yeah. tangible. Like yeah. you can apply that tonight. Yeah. So, you can do that tonight. Yeah. All right? That's so, a conversation. So, I think that part is important. Just real quick. That part is really important because just like you said, even if a person can be even somewhat healed, sometimes interpretation kind of plays a, fa uh, plays a role because if your vulnerability now becomes a threat to me, what you're saying now makes me insecure and it makes her feels like, feel like, oh man, then what is this saying about me? And what is this saying about my abilities? And what is this saying about how, how much he loves me? So prefacing it and preparing her equips her and makes her aware, gives her context, it sets her up for success mm -hmm. to be able to receive exactly what what's about to happen. It's almost yeah. like, man, I'm exercising for, uh, I'm preparing for this weight that I'm about to lift. So yeah. I'll warm up. That's what the warm up process is. The reason why I'm doing these pushups is because I'm about to try to lift this 315 at the end of this thing. And so I think it prepares, if you want it to go over successfully, then equip her, help her, empower her to help you mm -hmm. and be a safe space. Because sometimes if it just comes off really rash, it's like, man, I just feel like, man, sometimes I feel like I don't love you. But that's not what I meant. And that's why he said, <laughs> hey, talk to somebody first. Maybe they might give you some language. Right. Right. Yes. Give you some language. When I talked to him about some stuff I was going through with anger and stuff like that, he was like, man, this, this, this. And I was like, okay, that's good perspective. Same. This is how I'm going to deal with that. This is how I'm going to approach that. But sometimes we don't even have the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And so we try to toss ill vocabulary, the inability to even express ourselves to someone who is trying to interpret something and they'll get crushed in the process. So what he said was really fire. I love that. So Incredible. I, so this is the thing, I dropped the poll because I wanted to get a feel for, you know, what pretty much what the men in the room was thinking. Because in that clip, you got these two black men and they like, absolutely not. And you got the, the one white guy in there who was like, no, no, like this is deep, you know. We should consider what's, the, what's at the root of this issue, right? <laughs> right, right? So I just had to drop a feel in the room and this is what I did, I dropped the poll men this is men only should a man be vulnerable with a woman almost 500 votes 440 votes and 91 percent of men say yes so men are saying yes you should Ooh, wow. mm -hmm. so i think the issue could be is are you comfortable with it right mm. and are you you know i would say related to what the woman might react mm -hmm. so on the woman's end of the thing okay mm -hmm. Is it, you know, is the issue equipping? Is it, you know, preparation? Or is it a character thing? Like, what is it that a woman may not be understanding about this opportunity to embrace a man's vulnerability? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's each situation is its own isolated incident. 
And I think if we can start first with coming away from generalizations of women, right? Go. And then I need to figure out about this woman in particular, this woman, this woman in particular, because it's very easy to take our experiences and then say all, right? And then I, I, it shapes my perspective of even how I'm interacting at the onset. So I think that from a woman's perspective is, I think what would help set up a space where a man can be vulnerable is one, if a woman is intentional about letting him know consistently affirming that he's safe, mm -hmm. that this is a safe space. And it's not to where, where I have to tell you this, but I show you, I, I, I ask probing questions. Mm -hmm. I want to go deeper. I ask what I call those second and third tier questions. Mm -hmm. How was your day? A man is going to say, good, fine. Right. If I start asking deeper questions, like how was your mental state? How are you emotionally? Is there anything that you're carrying that you want to talk about? Is there anything that I can help you with? You know, because I love you and want you to know that you don't have to carry this alone. And the, the first few times, he may not say nothing. He may just be like, no, I'm good. But if you consistently are letting him know, hey, you don't have to carry this alone. I just want to let you know. You don't have to carry it alone. This is a safe space. I want you to know that I got your back. I'm your teammate. Don't suffer in silence. If you start putting that, in a man's mind and he starts to see it and understand it. But a woman has to have that desire mm. to want to be on a deeper level with a man. You got to like want it. You got to be in a space where I'm past the superficiality of relationships. I'm past going on, just going on dates, having good times and creating memories for Instagram. Mm. I'm in a space now. I want to build something that lasts. Mm. And in order to build anything that lasts, we got to dig up the dirt to lay a foundation. Mm. So I got to be willing and intentional about going deeper, mm. which is honestly, when you, when a woman understands her superpower is when we play to our strengths, a woman is wired emotionally. So she has the capability to navigate that space more effectively than a man. So how also can I make you know <clears throat> or show you that it's a safe space is I model it before you too as well. Mm. Is now I'm talking to you about the things that matter to me, but not in a way that comes across like uh, I'm just dumping on you, mm -hmm. but in a space where I'm including you. Mm -hmm. Like I want you, I want your input. I want, because we are building, we're partners, right? So it's, it's the subtleties that make a man feel safe in a space where it's like, okay, no, I can take this risk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was talking about this, like, for instance, because a lot of men, in order to deter an opportunity to be vulnerable, they'll throw themselves into something, right? So it's, for instance, a man who could every day after work go golfing, right, for two hours. Now, every day after work, if you've worked all day going golfing for two hours, when you have a wife and children at home, in my opinion, is a misuse of leadership. Mm -hmm. Because my first priority first is to my home. Now, you do have to create a space for you, but at the same time, be intentional that I can't give all of my time externally. Mm -hmm. But men do that because it's so natural to run. Instead of talk, I'll just get the energy out. Mm -hmm. But the problem doesn't go in the way, uh, go away. So it's, 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 a woman to say, okay, he golfs all the time. I don't like it. How can I create a safe space to let him know that he doesn't have to go golfing every day, even if he enjoys it? So I was talking, I was talking about this uh, example. For instance, if a man goes golfing every day, imagine your wife saying, okay, I know he's going golfing tomorrow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get up early and I'm going to lay his golf bag his clothes by the door i'm gonna set him up so he is able to go out and he doesn't have to even think about that mm. what a man will do look at your eyes what a man will Where do she at? Leaving, <laughs> out, leaving out the thought process is man she set me up real nice i'm not even thinking about golfing no more i'm thinking about the fact that she went out of her way and i know she i know she doesn't like me golfing all the time but she's intentionally saying, okay, hey, this is me 
exercising a superpower to let you know that emotionally I support you. And what it is, is it creates a space and you start doing that over time. Now I can already hear the women saying, if he golfing, he ain't just stopping. But I'm, I'm trying to give you game. If you start supporting, what he'll eventually do is include you. And then once he includes you, if you do that for a few days, he, he start thinking about that. Man, she keeps setting me up for, you know, babe, you, I'm going golfing today. You want to, you want to just come with me? You know, how about, how about we just go together? Mm -hmm. Now what happens? My thing becomes our thing. And then our thing transitions into me feeling safe enough to not have to go there. And then maybe today, I don't need to go golfing. Let me go home instead. Because what happens is she's de-walled me to believe that golfing is my outlet. That golfing is what I turn to. She's de-walled me to, to, for, for me to be able to understand that she can be the one I can turn to. Mm -hmm. uh. Because what men do is we want to get our energy. We just want to get it off. We don't, we don't like feeling emotionally unstable. We don't right. like feeling upset. We don't, I need to get the energy off. We go to the gym. We go do golfing. We go holler at the bros. We go out. We, we just want to get the energy out, mm -hmm. right? And what happens is if a woman starts to navigate that space to let you know, hey, I know you have this energy, but there are other ways, other options, and I can be a safe space for you to not only get the energy out, but to pour back into you. Mm -hmm. Because once we're done with whatever we're experiencing, once I come out from the gym from two hours and I'm dead and my arms are dead, I don't feel the energy, but at the same time, I don't feel better. Mm. Right. So imagine being in a space where you're safe enough to open up, be vulnerable, and then she has the opportunity to pour back into you. Mm. So talking about a woman is, I think she has to be in a space where one, she has to desire the depths. And whenever you go deep, it gets, it gets ugly. Mm. Whenever you go deep, it gets dark. Right? Think about the ocean. The deeper you go, the darker it gets. Mm. So if we're going to go deep, I got to be prepared to know that, hey, this may not be a pretty place. But if I desire to connect with you on a deeper level, I got to want the ugly stuff too. What if we get to the place where we start wanting the ugly stuff? We're in a relationship. I don't just want the pretty. Mm. I want the ugly. I want the darkness. I want the places where you feel like that you can't open up. That's where I want to be. Mm. Because if I can get there and we connect in a dark place, there is nothing that can shake us when we come out of this moment. Now, now, here, now, now I want to ask you this. And Zeke, you could probably help out on this one. Because this is what's really happening mm. that a lot of the brothers are dealing with and struggling with. Uh -oh. mm -hmm because they might go ahead and they might take that shirt off, mm. be vulnerable, and it's mishandled. Even mm -hmm. the best of women drop the ball in those moments, mm. whether it's that moment or in the future. Yeah. A really good example of a, a way a brother might see, see, and women might miss, because they don't know what a vulnerable moment might look like, because again, we might mask it in many ways. Right. Because again, if a man understands we're tasked with the ability to provide, understand anytime a man opens up to you ladies about any struggles, especially in his financial life, understand that's a vulnerable moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if it sounds small, fast, quick, or however he did it, it was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy for a woman to just say something like, now you know we ain't supposed to be eating that because you still ain't got no job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, just, just even, even yeah. in just like conversation. Wow. Wow. Even yeah. uh, and that's just what. It, and I'm not even saying that's a bad woman. Just like yeah. in just her using her logic or and and just talking yeah. wow. right without thinking. Yeah. She's not really that moment can happen. Yes. Right. Yeah. As a man, that yeah. moment happened. Your woman violates. Yeah. Not intentionally. Your vulner, whether yeah. not intentionally, yeah. but, but she violates. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How do you respond? Well, first I will say this as a tip to women. Um, my wife taught me this with my daughter, but I would advise don't react. Seek to understand and respond if necessary. So my daughter, when she was about 10 or 11, she would come home and tell me about, um, 
she would tell us both as parents, um, there was this boy at school and he said this and he touched my arm and I would just raise up like, who, what boy, where, where, who, what, when, how? My, my wife would grab my arm and say, don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. And I just, I kept quiet for the rest and let her talk and I was just heated like, why she tell me not to, not to do that? And then later on, once my daughter left, she was like, you want to be a safe space for your daughter. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the person that is always so quick to react mm -hmm. that she gets stifled in her expression. She's going to refuse and find it so volatile to come to you and tell you some of the little things that happen. What happens when something big happens? She's going to refuse to want to tell you. And I kept on doing it, just and not even noticing. Like my brother said, it wasn't even on purpose. And I noticed this little by little when it came to just something, if a boy came up, she'd be like, so mommy, um, a boy said this. I'm just like, no, talk to me too. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's going on. I get but it. I realized that I was more prone and inclined to react than to understand, listen, mm -hmm. and respond if necessary. See, you only respond out of understanding, out of recognizing, hey, I heard you. I understand. I'm not going to react in this macho bravado, I'm going to re I'm going to respond in, as someone who has listened, heard you out. And in the same way, as 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 a woman, if she does that, I think it's important for a man to be able to be honest and say, "Hey, when I share things like this with you, this is part of vulnerability." Yeah, right? right. Taking another step of vulnerability to say, "Hey, when I share things like this with you, and you respond in this way." causes me not to want to open up with you mm -hmm. the same way you empowered her and set her up to prepare you to prepare her for vulnerability in the same way if she makes the mistake and mishandles a moment of vulnerability it's your it's this is your woman this is not your your turn to just say you know what see now i never be vulnerable mm -hmm. again because there may be moments that you might have mishandled her vulnerab mm -hmm. vulnerability so say hey this is this is what that does to me when you respond like this. When you, re if when I share things with you, I want you to listen to me. I want you to hear me out. I want you to support me. I want you, you, you equip her. You teach her. This is the same thing with intimacy. Mm -hmm. Like my brother said, men always want to come into a situation, situation acting like they already know it already. So men that was smashing and that nobody ever complained in the streets, and you want to come <laughs> home and you want to have this wife, and you don't know her body. And you don't want her to teach you her body. Mm -hmm. You don't want her to teach you the nuances and the imperfections and all the things that she's already known about her own body because you already got it like that. Why are we so afraid to, to teach and to learn? We hate the dynamic of school so much mm -hmm. that when it comes to our relationship, we think that we got it so locked down that we don't even have to take a level of vulnerability to say, I don't know how to handle you teach me in the same we both need to be having that conversation i don't know how to respond when you share with me things like this show me what makes you feel confident in the same way we need to say hey this is what makes me feel confident i noticed yes. that when i share this with my bros and they share things like this mm. with me this it makes me feel confident or Right when I, I feel confident when I write something down, if you could read it and then send me something later, that makes me feel like you heard me without you crying about it, without you screaming about it. This is what empower them, teach them, mm -hmm. give them an opportunity to learn. Don't just assume because they didn't respond the way that you would have dictated or imagined or dreamed. Then now they're, they're not a safe space. Well, Will was talking about a safe space. My wife is not a safe space. It's over. Nah, <laughs> you didn't teach her. You didn't give an opportunity to learn. Yeah. I think that's a very constructive game. So you said what? A very constructive game. Very oh, constructive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if if we're talking about tips, right? What he just gave us is a tangible thing. So if you got your notepad, get it out. You and your spouse get a a board of paper. Write down what your soft spots or your weak areas are. Mm. Right. If we're talking about money, put your things down on a sheet of paper. Hey, these are my soft spots. Come on. Hey. These are, these are the things, these are my hot button items. That's big. Right? So at least now I have an awareness that I need to handle these areas with care. You're talking about doing it with school. Like write them down and then go away from the one and done. If you, nobody learns anything once. Wow. Nobody learns anything once. So 
if, like you said, if they do it once, then now I have to put on a teacher hat to say, hey, that didn't feel good. And she may say, oh, I didn't even mean it like that. I know, but this is how it makes me feel when we talk around these already identified hot mm. button issues, right? So because then now I have an awareness. People are just going through relationships blind and we've trying to <laughs> we figuring it out when we hit it, yeah. right? You don't know it's hot until you touch it. And then you you have the whole ramification of the outburst. And yeah. now now you're in pain. Now you need ice. Now you're trying to fix it real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. when if you would have had the awareness to say, okay, on my stove it says burner hot, right? And I already know that this is a, a hot space. I need to handle this with care. So that's a good tactic or tip to do is to write them down. Bro, when I got an F in school, they didn't expel me. They gave me tutoring. <sighs> and this is what we do when someone, when <laughs> someone fails at an opportunity to handle you or to understand, we just say, all right, expelled. Yeah. You're out of here. Yeah. We'll say, hey, look, here's an opportunity for you to learn this again. They have remedial classes. Hey, and this is, and we're, we're talking about marriage here. Yeah. This is somebody that I've chosen to do life with over time. I'm not going to, and when I say expel, it doesn't mean you got to divorce them. Yeah. I could divorce you emotionally. I can say, I will never open up to you again because you failed that test. You are expelled emotionally. <laughs> oh my Dang. God. Being in that space, bro. Like, and we've done that so much where it's, we, what men do is we go, oh, okay. Got it. Say less. Mental notes. Mental oh, okay. note taken. Mm -hmm. okay, that's what cool. that's where, when I see cool. Shaq, that's and we're what I saw. smiling and we're just everything yeah. is moved. And then we've made a, a complete 180 shift internally. Come on. So not expelling, creating that safe place of of learning. It's gotta be an opportunity to learn, you know. And then for men, I think that this is a good tip too, is because since we are not wired emotionally maybe create another space where you're being vulnerable void of an emotional state mm. right so if i'm emotional i don't talk right now i process but i don't keep it in i share it when i'm able to convey it correctly mm. because as a man we start talking in an emotional state and stuff come out weird it comes out harsh yeah. or it comes out it because we're not wired emotionally so you literally get raw emotion it could come out as soft yeah like too soft absolutely uh -oh. so you don't know necessarily how it's going to come out when you peel that back right so maybe if i'm in a space where i don't know if i have the full gamut of where i can be my full emotional vulnerable self vulnerable self then maybe i am I process emotionally, I get the emotion out, and then now I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Hey, so this is what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. This is what, so now I'm not in a fragile state mm -hmm. because when men get emotional, they get fragile mm -hmm. because we're now wired that way. I think when, so I think earlier when we mentioned the masculine and feminine, yeah. I think that's just better communicated. Yeah. It's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. that's the mask. It's just, you being emotionally stable yep. before you begin to communicate an emotional issue. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, don't, yeah. Be, don't be trying to start the sentence with the not already yeah. in your throat. Right. Yeah. Well, you, you can't make it halfway through the damn sentence. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. For and, you women, right. and women, you got to be cautious of trying to force a man to talk when he's in an emotional state. Right. If he says, hey, I just need a beat, I just need a moment. No, we need to talk about this right now. No, we don't. We just, let me, let me, hold on, let me just... I need to, no, no, we need to talk. Cause then what happens is you push it, you push it, you push it. And then when it comes out raw, you can't judge him for that. Yeah. Right. Because I tried to protect us. Mm. Like I want to talk to you, but at the same time, I got to be in the space. You can't push me. You back a dog in the corner, he going to bite you. Yeah. Mm. Like, so if you get him into a corner and he doesn't know, like the tendency is I got to fight my way out this corner. And sometimes women are collateral damage of me trying to fight myself out of emotional corners. That's crazy. Mm. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So crazy. it's in the space of knowing, hey, I'm feel hey, hey, no, not, not right now. Not right now. Not right now. But here's the tendency is that men will say not right now and they'll never they'll never circle back. Mm -hmm. And I've I so I used to do that. And yeah. I had a young lady who called me out and she kept she kept saying, I didn't really understand what she was saying. Mm -hmm. 
but because she would kind of say it casually until it got end up getting into a serious conversation. But she would say like, "You always say we're gonna talk about that. We always never talk about that." Mm. Yeah. And I used to be like, "No, no, we we do." And I used to kind of ignore it because yeah. she, it didn't seem like she was just very serious when she used to say it. Yeah. Until it came to a point where it's like, you know what? You never do this. Mm -hmm. wow. And I'm like, wow, you never? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it had been, she really had been communicating that over, you know, consistently over time. Wow. So I do think you just have to have respect, you know, for how that person might be viewing things and really be so present to mm -hmm. understand, understand that they don't have to have a serious face mm -hmm. when they having a serious issue or concern yeah that's called emotional procrastination right there i'm telling you <laughs> it's incredible y'all dropping all that's types go of ahead phrases just keep pushing it back <laughs> and you ain't even really you have no intention on yeah. really addressing it yeah mm -hmm. just keep snowballing that joint over and over and it's yeah. just getting bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. and you're really not trying to address what's really going on agree and, and we don't have a plan for those moments like we don't what people don't plan for tough times in relationship we don't we don't come together and the time that you plan for tough times is in good times people try to plan for tough times in tough times i need to be in a space where when we come together and we're building hey okay hypothetically right how are we going to handle situations if financially it gets tough right how do we handle situations where we're angry at one another what's our process right what's our plan for when we don't see eye to eye. What's our plan for if I feel emotionally attacked and if you feel emotional, like what are we going to do in those moments? Mm -hmm. Because if I have a plan going in, then I can reference the plan. Like for instance, we, me and my wife had this thing when we first, uh, we first got married and we were dating, where when we were working through things, if we said uh, a specific word, like we said that, hey, I'm feeling a little triggered by that. Immediately, our process was the other person, no matter no matter what, you got to flip and be the bigger person in this situation, mm. right? Because if I'm not going to abuse this, so if I say it, it's real, mm. right? So if I say this, then if, I, if she says, hey, I'm feeling triggered, and then I say, okay, let me pause real quick. Okay, I may not be communicating correctly. Something is happening to where it's putting you on the defense. And what's going to happen is if we go any further, it's going to go off the rails. Mm. So this is this is our stopping point. Okay, if you feel triggered, if I feel triggered, we're going to stop and pivot. We'll circle back. But that's our plan, right? Because what happens is we don't have a stopping point. So we just go and go and go and go. And then it escalates and escalates and escalates. And now we're at all out war. And then we're trying to plan on how to recruit from war. Mm. If I got a plan, if I have the art of war, the strategy of how mm. we're going to maneuver through this, I never get to full out war. Come on. Yeah. Because I know what our plan is. So it's in a good moment. Let's sit down. Let's talk about the potential for tough times, because as sure as you live, tough times are coming. Right. And I like that. It's like bound. Every time we think about boundaries, it's always like these are the lines. Don't cross the line coming in. Yeah. I want to protect this space. But I think in relationships, we got to think about boundaries just like they do in basketball games or football games. Like these are the lines that we've created to keep this a safe space. And we don't want to be able to push each other out of the space of closeness. Out of, out of balance. Like if I if we want this thing to work. These are lines that and parameters that we've put in place. And then if we step outside of those lines, then we're losing intimacy. Then we're losing closeness. And so if I'm playing this game, this is for the pros only. That's good. It's for the pros only. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got boundaries to keep us in this thing. Come on. And so me and my wife have boundaries to keep us in this thing. There are times when we when things start rising and I start feeling a certain type of way, I gotta write it in a notepad. Yeah. And the process of writing. Sometimes I feel like I'm gonna let her see this, mm -hmm. but as I get everything out, everything I, I, I have to say, I tell her, you know, I have a notepad mm -hmm. and it's in my notes, and you got, you could, you have, feel free to check it at any time. Mm -hmm. And then I start writing things. I'm like, I don't really mean that because when you have a, you have the power to erase and write and erase. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't think I want to say that. Yeah. Mm. And so because our mouth can be so sharp and quick, you might say things that you don't really mean. But when I write, I'm a writer, so I take my time and I'm like. I don't want to say that. Mm -hmm. And even when I'm done with it, I look at it, I read it back, and I'm saying, 
I don't even think I need her to see this. Let me, mm-hmm. race. Yeah. Let me come back. There might, there might be a simpler way. If I just say sorry for this, maybe things might just be better. <sighs> and so that whole paragraph that you would have chewed her out with, go ahead and take your time and create. Param- these are the parameters that we've created to mm-hmm. keep each other in this thing. Figure out what works for you guys. Those are questions to ask. Like my brother said, I think that was one of the biggest things. What are your soft points? Lay those things out. If you got to put it on sticky notes and say, hey, look, you only have to talk. We do vision boards. <laughs> we do vision right. boards. Let's do hot boards. Hot boards. Hello? Don't touch Hotline me. bling. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's about that time, y'all. It's about that time for the family to get involved in the conversation. So what's about to be uh, happen here, y'all, is we are going to go ahead and drop the link in here because I want y'all to come in. And listen, I want the man tonight. Last time these brothers came in, the man showed up. I want the man to get on here and chop it up uh, because what I want the men to come on here and let me know tonight, uh, what are your thoughts about being vulnerable with a woman? All right? So, man, come up here, and uh, Ryan, Ryan's going to put the link in the uh, Big uh, fact, for us. shout out to Wanda Anderson and Nick Shaw for joining the Initiate family, and shout out to, this is my girl, Shamira, Shamira 8, member for two months, all right? The one for me, my grace is ready to serve your fears and work the room until you understand you are enough and fight the world with you to no end. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Is that a verse? Is that a Bible verse? <laughs> nah, 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 not quite. Why? Oh, nah, okay, okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Okay, straight yeah. off the dome. <laughs> Yo, so let me ask you this, because he's equal. You mentioned uh, you and your daughter having a moment. You, your daughter, and your wife. It was like layers of vulnerability mm-hmm. on that with you and your wife and mm-hmm. you and your daughter, her and your yeah. daughter, everything. And she gave you some tactical advice for, you know, how to treat the situation. Yeah. Now, I could imagine, of course, because a lot of the things that you guys have been sharing seem to be some universal, universal treatments for this potential issue with you know handling vulnerability Mm -hmm. but you know men and women are wired differently Mm -hmm. so you may have some women who may identify with hey i'm more of a direct person or hey i'm not as emotional or you know maybe i'm an introvert maybe i just certain certain ways that as a woman or as a person who i am i like to handle things this way and really it could be for men and women Mm -hmm. hey i'm this type of person this is how i prefer to handle things But do you think that when dealing with the opposite sex and these levels of vulnerability, there are some things that you should curb or some nuances that you should begin to practice so you can reach the opposite sex uh, better than you would if you were just communicating how you would regularly? Um, So I would say I think you already nailed it when you said on an individual basis, I'm not practicing for every woman. I'm not developing myself Um, as a husband for every potential wife, like I'm preparing myself for one. And so that's why I think it's really, really important to observe how she moves, what she likes and ask the necessary questions. So I don't Mm -hmm. think there is a one true way to approach every woman when it comes to the vulnerability conversation. I think some tried and true ways are to observe that woman. Take note, the Bible says, by their fruit, you shall know them. Um, The idea of fruit is understanding that Hey, a fruit is just an offspring of Mm. the tree. Mm. And so you observe characteristics of the fruit and you know that it came from that particular tree. So if you recognize someone is exhibiting certain things, hey, look, that looks like jealousy. That looks like uh, uh, toxic behavior. All those things, you'll be able to be able to see those things and be able to refrain and say, hey, I might be able to work with you. I might be able to treat you as an associate, but I may not be able to open up and create a safe space here. Mm. And that's okay. So I think trying to blanket and paint everything one way to say, hey, look, from now on, vulnerability for me to woman looks like this. I think we we might, you can, there are some things that you could do, especially the things that he said, but I think the, the proper way is understanding that woman and understanding what way she re- receives communication, what she, way she receives challenge and correction. And in the same way, you teaching her the ways that you as an individual need to experience your heart to be handled. So I, I think I don't, I, I want to avoid, these are the projections and generalizations. I think we want to step away more and more from those mm-hmm. ideas because I don't think there's a one size fits all. I like bling. Hold on one second, guys. I, wanna, I want y'all to know the link is in there. So I want you guys to go ahead and join that link. My brother's in here in particular. I want to talk to the brothers in here tonight. I want to know. I want to hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts about being vulnerable to a woman. In fact, I got a brother in here right now, Turks. I want to bring up real quick to hear your thoughts. 
Turks, welcome to the show. How you feeling, brother? Yeah, I'm blessed. Yeah, I'm blessed. How you doing? How you doing? What's up, Turks? Turks, blessed, brother. If you can, go ahead, give us your age, your location, and give me your thoughts, man. How you feeling about being vulnerable uh, to a woman? All right. I'm All right. Up, I'm up. 37, 37 in two days. In two days. Um, um, North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay, 37 in two days, North Carolina. Happy yeah, early yeah. birthday. I appreciate it. Appreciate. Um, um, uh, says, uh, says, uh, I think every, I think every man, every individual, individual want, want to be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. Um, I think, um, I think more, more as a position, as a position, if they feel, if they feel, be vulnerable, be vulnerable within. Hold on, wait, wait, Turks, you might, you might be blocking your speaker a little bit. You kind of going in and out a little bit. So I want you to repeat that one more time for me. I think everybody, I think everybody vulnerable, with vulnerable with somebody, with somebody uh, be able to have that, have that space, space, space um, but I think um, more than four, everybody does, everybody does, does have pace, pace, pace. pace. Safe, 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 anybody, anybody. Understood, understood. You say every man wants to be vulnerable, but everybody does not have that safe space. I agree. I understand that, brother. I Absolutely. get that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, brother, for your feedback. I appreciate you coming up on here, Turks, okay? Shout out to Turks, Turks representing the fellas. Much yeah, love, yeah, much yeah. love. And listen, yeah, look, brothers, come on up here. We want to hear the brothers tonight. All right, so we got it in here. We we got the uh, link right there in the chat so you guys can go ahead and join. Let us know how y'all feel about being vulnerable with your lady, all yeah. right? And the, I want to go kind of go back to that because you talked about the generalizations, right? And, and of course, it's, it's always general rules of thought when it comes to certain things. But the reason I ask that is because I, I think that sometimes we can become really comfortable with what we like to do versus what the other person might prefer to receive. And that's what I was going to say. I think the goal of communication is to not get what you said out, but to get what you said heard, mm -hmm. right? So I think a lot of it is understanding that there are two separate categories. My vulnerable space is about me. How we communicate is about us, mm -hmm. right? So... I, when I'm being vulnerable, this is me allowing you in, you know, past this hard exterior and this whoever's being vulnerable, we have to centralize that moment about them. Mm -hmm. Right. Because this is a space where you're exposing yourself, where you're being open, where you you are most uh, uh, in a space where you can be hurt the worst. Right. So I have to be intentional about focusing in on you. But the way we do things and how we move and how we communicate, the onus is on each other to learn how each person prefers, right? Mm. It's it's knowing your thought process, knowing your how you move. You know, there's a um, uh, uh, this Herman brain dominance instrument. It's it's a it's a way to necessarily navigate through thought processes and preferences. Right. I train business leaders on this and in the space of understanding that. You may be more of an analytical thinker and I may be more of a relational thinker, right? The goal now is to figure out how do you prefer to receive communication? And then I have to communicate with you based on how you prefer to receive communication, because otherwise I'm giving it to you in the way that I prefer to receive it. And I'm just giving it to you in a way that's on, either going to put you on the defense or it's going to create a breach within our communication because it's, it may repel you unless we're the same type of people, mm -hmm. right? So it's presentation of knowing how, okay, this is how I prefer to handle things. But if I'm going to build with you in anything, mm -hmm. I have to die to I. That's it. I have to be now we focused. Mm -hmm. And we focused is what is our flow? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you want me to talk to you about certain things? Are you are you direct? OK, and if you're not direct and guess what, it's it's a place for me to develop because now I need to be able to communicate with you on the plane that you can understand it. Mm. Right. It's like a baby. You give a baby some peas and they spit it out and you they take that same scoop of peas. I call it the airplane method. Mm. And you start doing loop de loops and you're making noises and all of this type of stuff. Right. It's a place you make it palatable. Mm. And I got to learn what's the way that you can hear me. And that's the thing is that we think, well, I'm just going to communicate the way I communicate. Okay. You, you may be shooting yourself in the foot uh -huh. because my goal is not to get what I said out is to get what I said heard. 
And how can I give it to you in a way that you can hear me? If you don't eat pork, if I keep serving you bacon and getting mad because you're not eating the bacon, mm. then I'm the crazy one because <laughs> you don't eat pork. Yeah. So I need to figure out what you eat, how do you eat, and how do you prefer to actually get into a space where we can connect and communicate? Because then I'm in a space where I'm doing my part, where I'm coming in and say, okay, I'm going to die to the way I necessarily prefer, and I need to be reborn in a sense of knowing how we communicate. If, if I communicate this way and it's direct, and when you communicate this way, it's more of big vision, big thinker, however then we have a flow of how we communicate, but that has to be on both sides mm. because what happens is one person will do it. And the, and if the other person doesn't, then it'll make the person, the other person who was doing it, start resenting the other person that they're doing it for. Mm. So now I'm sacrificing for you, but you're not sacrificing for me And any state or space where it is not reciprocal is a breeding ground for resentment mm -hmm. because then I resent you because, and here's the thing <laughs> is that, People, especially men, they'll continue to do it and just will let the resentment grow. Yeah. I'll keep doing it because as a man, I'm trying to do my part, mm. but you're not doing your part is only making me resent you more. Mm. So having a space to say, hey, how do you prefer? Like we do love language. What's your communication language? What's your communication style? Right. Do we we have certain things how we process like me and my wife, we don't talk about serious things at the end of the night in bed. Mm. We're not going to do it before we go to bed because mm. we don't I don't know how we're going to process heavy information. Right. Something yeah. heavy could happen. We, let's table it for tomorrow where we can be open. We can be up. We can be alert because I know how I am when I'm tired. Mm. Right. And I could be very much like dismissive, not in a space where I'm disrespectful, but I just may not be able to have the energy to engage for real. Right. And I want to be present. Right. Yeah. So how do you like to communicate? Mm. And then I got to do the work. If that's not me to learn that. And, and what, what was that line about reciprocation? Again, you said where there's no reciprocation. It's a breeding ground for resentment. I want to add something in there, too. If there is no acknowledgement, yeah. I think that's very important. I think showing gratitude and acknowledging when somebody is being vulnerable is also important. Mm -hmm. yes. And it it doesn't always come in like direct communication. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's so funny when like I because I see this on when you know when I'm actively dating. Okay, it's for me <laughs> dating is I'm very vulnerable when I'm dating. Okay, mm -hmm. if I'm spending some money, I'm spending some time. Like this is really important to me. Yeah, you know. So even the acknowledgement of hey, you know what. I had a great time tonight or you didn't have, Hey, thanks for taking me out. Mm -hmm. And on my end, I, I realized I had to also acknowledge that the woman in Dayton is being very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Hey, I appreciate you for allowing me to take you out tonight mm -hmm. because this is risky for you. Mm -hmm. I could be any crazy dude. You know what I mean? It could be a lot of things going on. You got time, you got resources, things that you are allowing, you know, uh, 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 to yourself to be vulnerable and give me an opportunity. Yeah. So I think even early on, just being able to acknowledge when the other person is having vulnerable actions is really important. It's setting a really good foundation for a relationship. But you can't also hold someone accountable if they don't know that about you. I agree. So I agree. setting that, that tone early to say, hey, this type of person, I like acknowledgement, right? Mm. So if I'm doing this effort, and they, so because... What happens is we'll, we'll expect something that we've never shared, and then we judge people for not acting in the space where they haven't been armed with that awareness. Mm. So I do this for you, and you don't acknowledge it, so then now I feel some type of way. Mm. Like we went out, and you didn't say, you know, you didn't go over or above to acknowledge it, and she may have no understanding that that's what you like or that's what you need. You know what I mean? Right. So So I, I do believe that being able to express and share those up front of who I am, that this is important to me. And I, these are the things that I prefer, you know what I mean? Because then you don't put yourself in a space that we as men are becoming bitter and judging someone for something that they didn't even know. Well, and see, that's why I say, because you never really know on an individual standpoint, mm -hmm. kind of what somebody might, you know, really favor. That's why I just say just very simple things. I, 
please and thank you. Yes. Like, if I, I don't know Absolutely. you, I'm yeah. going to say, could you please? Yes. And if you do something that is clear, clearly courteous, I'm yeah. going to say thank you. Absolutely. So just maneuvering with those two words alone, even when you just initially getting to meet somebody and get Love to know that. somebody, I think is ideal. No, that's facts. Yeah. And, and, and family, listen, right now it's a little echo in the initiation hotline. So unfortunately, we're going to have to table the initiation hotline. We're going to go ahead and get this fixed and we'll have it taken care of before Wednesday night show. So anybody that wants to go about um, uh, joining the conversation, just so go ahead and send your super chats in, send those in so we can go ahead and get you involved in the conversation so we can still make sure we get any of your questions answered. All right. And what I also want to do here is, Ryan, we got another sponsor that I want to make sure we do not forget here before yes. we get into it, because we really have an exciting, first of all, I wouldn't even expect this vulnerability piece to go this far in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, the brothers need it. Yeah. The yeah, brothers really needed that one, because I'm telling y'all, we read these emails, we read, look, every email you guys send over to info at harleyinitiated.com, by the way, we read every single one of them. Anything that you guys are going through, anything you want us to address, send it over. And that's why we had to go that deep, because trust me, the brothers, they feeling it. And right, right after this episode sponsor here, I actually got some more things that I want to continue that the brothers was communicating. Yeah, shout out to Harley and Love Dating Cars, man. It's so fun. Like, this is our baby. This right here is our baby. When I tell you, me and Tyshawn was in the lab coming up with these questions. <laughs> in the lab. They are tried and true and proven. In the and field, too. In the field. And the thing is, like... Amongst all ages, all sexes, the cars are a hit because it is really difficult to not only establish connection, yeah. but it's really difficult to have the right things to ask. To Because mm -hmm. you can ask a bunch of questions and it could be a straight interview. But if you have those two, and maybe two, two to three questions in the conversation, man, it really can take it to the next level. And these cards, like, it's just not about playing a game. To me, it's really just about getting better at being present and being aware and really getting to know the people that's around you. Because we can run these cars in a group, like when we ran them in a the group. And I was hearing, Tyshawn was sharing things. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that's, right. that's, that's my boy, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't even know it's like that, you know? So, and so you can really learn on so many levels, man. So I would strongly advise you all we just got the new shipment in so we we, we the first 500 we sold we got a new shipment supplies is not going to be an issue go to the website i'm gonna drop the link in the comments the the description the chat everything and make sure you get a pack of these and the good news is this month we're doing something very special it's february y'all this is the month all right love 20 guys will get you 20 percent off the dating cards this month of february so go ahead Act now and get your Harley and Love cards and get that popping ASAP. So going into it here, mm -hmm. I want to ask this question because sometimes, you know, as men, a part about, you know, you know, the experience, we just might not be feeling our fullest selves. Mm. And a woman can have a lot to do with that. She can aid to how much of a man we feel like or kind of pop you know, or deflate the air out that balloon, if you will. So I want to ask this though, because even maybe I'm even going in the wrong direction with what I'm saying here, because is it a woman's responsibility to make you feel like a man, or is that a man's responsibility to feel like a man? <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's so many ways that you can go with this. Uh, yeah, I think. please help, help, uh, help us out here. So I think that when we come into relationship first, we come in with the the more preconceived notion of what is my list and what is your list? Like, what are you going to do for me versus what I'm going to do for you? And I think that if we get past the levels of what you're supposed to do this for me or you're supposed to do this for me and more of a collaborative thought process of if you have a business, right? You guys have a business together, yeah. right? Right, and there's something that needs to be done. You're not going to say, "Hey, Ryan, you're the only one that's going to do this," right? Your thought process is, "We're going to come to together to figure out whatever yeah. we need to do to get it done." Yeah. And if a person comes into a relationship and I see a gap or hole where you may not be feeling like your your best self, one, if a man gets to a place where he is not feeling like the man or like himself, he has probably tried everything 
known to man to try to get himself out of that space yeah. because we don't like feeling like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I've gotten to that space, I can't help myself. Right. That's the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll keep suffering in silence because we keep trying to dig ourselves out of a hole. But every time I dig down to try to dig myself out, I dig myself deeper. Mm. So if I, as a uh, coming into a late relationship and I see a gap, if a woman sees a gap in her man, the prudent thing would be, okay, I don't like you not feeling like yourself. How can I help? Mm. Right? Not to say that I have to carry the brunt or the burden, but it's more so of how can I help you be your best self? And if we both have that type of mentality, I think that it, it's, it goes beyond, okay, as a man, you do this. And as a woman, you do this. This is more so now I'm talking about, like, if we're going to build something of value and of substance, it's going to be whatever we got to do to get it done. How can I come in and love you and serve you and protect you and to provide you what you need for you to live at your best self? And how can you do that same for me? And if I see a gap... If I love you, mm. I am not going to allow you to keep sinking deeper into a hole. Come mm. on. Come on. Only the people who don't love you will see you sinking and complain about you drowning. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Only the people who don't care will see you in a space where you are going deeper into a hole and, and they will stand externally and talk about you shouldn't be there. Mm. Because love will cause you to go down anywhere with the person you care. Listen, me, if I love you, my wife and I, wherever we got to go through it, I don't care how dark it gets. I don't care how ugly it gets. I don't care. My brother, if he calls me, I am coming. Like, mm. it's, it doesn't matter what it is. And if I feel that that's a space where you know that whatever I go into, I know that you got my back. Come on. Then I'm in a space now where we can create something beautiful. Like, if I love you and I see you sinking, yeah. why would I let you sink? Oh. Oh, okay. Because that's not my responsibility? Mm. Don't make sense. Why? And a woman uh, is a special type of mirror. You look in a regular mirror, you see who you are. You yeah. look at a good woman, and a good woman reflects who you're supposed to be. So when I see her, I aspire to be more. She speaks She speaks off what challenges me to grow me. Her lifestyle and the words that she even speaks to me causes me to rise each yeah. day. And so in, in the same way, I think the, the foundation of it is recognizing who I am and who God is calling me to be. And my wife, a good woman, is supposed to align herself with the person that God is calling me to be. So she will always, always see me at my low state and say, mm, God is calling you higher. Mm. I know, no, you're depressed right now. You're feeling low about this. You know what? You could have joy because I'm rocking with you. I know you feel like this because of this, but no, you got, you got better. I know you lost this job, but there's still more in you. I know that business didn't work out, but you're a genius. A good woman is going to, you know, cause you to look and see yourself as even more than you could even imagine. So I, I think that the idea is not about a woman trying to uh, make you feel like a man, but a good woman is going to cause you to rise to be the man that God has called you to be. And I think there's a there's a fair difference in the two. Because mm. we, do, we do that with, with each other. If I see my brother with his head down, Come on. what am I going to tell him? Hold your head up. Pick yeah. your head up. Yeah. Pick your head up. Why? Because I can't see where I'm headed looking down here. Come on, bro. And a woman has the ability mm. to cause you to refocus, to look forward, to yeah. give you vision, to yeah. give you insight. I'm going to speak to where you're supposed to be headed. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I'm in a low space and I'm down on myself, that moment is so important because she has that king button that she Come can on. push. The king button. And remind you of who yeah. you're supposed to be, mm. of who God called you to be. Mm. And I'm not speaking to you in accordance with your situation. Come on. And we keep having these situational transactions where we get into a situation and I address you according to your situation. Yes. But when I have an awareness of who you are, mm. 
if I go deep enough to understand the value that you have and that you bring and who you are as a man, and I don't do the proverbial culture thing to call you king just because it's a cool word, but I've done the work to d dig deep enough to see your kingly attributes, mm. to see your perseverance, to see your wisdom, to see how you handle pressure. Mm. Once I have that awareness, mm. I can hit that king button when you feel down on yourself and it will remind you, it yeah. will wake you up. Yeah. That's why we get into the spaces with our with our bros is because he'll tell you, come on, man, yeah, pick your head up. Let's go. You know you better than that. You're mm -hmm. stronger than that. That's when you get into the gym, we all work out. Yeah. You get with somebody who's going to push you past that last rep. Yeah. You may not have it, mm. but you get under that weight and they start talking to you. Come on, that's lightweight. Mm. Push, push. Come on, that's light. You start to hear it and you connect with it. And guess what happens? You start lifting weight that you didn't even know that you could lift. Let's go. Because someone had the awareness to not talk to you about the weight that you're under and talk to you about your ability to move the weight. Mm, mm, mm. Come on, Brody. <laughs> Come on, Brody. I love that. Uh, now, that's a so, fact. I would say this too, though, because that, depending on the vantage point a woman's looking at, that low point of you not knowing who you are, when we, when we look, when we fired off all them power words about mm -hmm. a man, it was none of them words. Yeah. Mm. And the women, they'll fire off them same words. Mm. And it's one thing seeing your homeboy down. Mm hmm. And it's one thing as a woman seeing the man that's supposed to be potentially leading you and her family mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So that's a very unsexy space yeah. for a man to be in. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a woman is deciding whether or not they should hit that king button or hit that get the hell up out of here button. The eject yeah. button. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so this right. would be my question. Abandon ship. Yeah. This would be my question. Have you ever seen him in a king role? Like if you've if if he's gotten to a place where he hit a low space, have you ever seen him as a king? Have you ever seen him reign? Mm, so because point. you have a point of reference now. If I met you and you always been broke, then that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But if I met you and you had it, mm -hmm. and then now we hit tough times, guess what? I have a point of reference that you can get it again. Yeah. So I think it's the aspect too of oh having the awareness that okay yeah I know you're supposed to lead you know, our family and you, you're the prophet, priest and king of our home. Right. But if, especially when we talk about marriage, if I've married you, I know the type of man you are. Jeez. I know your heart because you wouldn't even get to a place where you are in a position to lead a family. If you were Debbie, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Because now I'm just playing with you. Right. And, and, and it takes a level of discernment to, to, to see the raw materials, but then to see dis discern a finished product by yeah. looking at the raw materials. And I, I believe in the raw materials. And so some women say, well, then what are we supposed to be looking for? Because we're not supposed to get with a man who's potential and we're not supposed to. At the end of the day, if potential is trying to dream up something that's not really there, that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But if potential means that I see, I see the milk. I see the eggs, I see the sugar, I see the flour. You know what? I see cake. Mm -hmm. mm. I see cake. You're just figuring out how to put it together, but I see all the requirements. I see all the Look, all you need is a little bit. You need a little sprinkle. Let me come and be the sprinkle, but I see cake. And I think the problem is a lot of times women if they don't see the finished cake in the pink box, and it's like, well, he ain't, he ain't ready yet. Not realizing that they're the missing ingredient. You might be the whisk. You mm -hmm. might be the whisk. I'm out of here. The problem, <laughs> the problem might be, yeah. You, you, but see. I just needed yeah. the whisk, though. But, but you got to know the ingredients <laughs> to get to that destination. Though. Yeah, true. Very, very if you're true. not familiar with the formula, Come on. then you're going to be selling your, both you and your man short. But you can't know what's, what's the raw materials if you're so focused on finished product cakes. You know what? Some of us don't even know what it takes to make a cake because all we know is how to eat cake. Ooh. We ain't never made cake. We ain't never been in the kitchen. We ain't never seen the process. And we can't appreciate, you know, you know when, 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 when somebody really bakes a cake and takes the time, when you- From scratch. From scratch, it's like, mm, I know everything I put, this is good. Mm. But then the ungrateful, entitled folks that just, they, you know my kids, they're just, <laughs> yeah. with the yeah. icing on, they don't know what, they didn't know that it took eggs. They didn't know how I had to whisk it all together. They didn't know the time, the process for it to rise, for it to become this cake. Come on, I know you. And if you come into the kitchen <laughs> while on. I'm baking, you may have a misconception. Uh -oh. Facts. Because if I'm baking in I'm here, baking over it's here. messy. 
Facts. If yeah. I'm baking, I got powdered sugar everywhere. I got cracked eggs. If you come I'm in while I'm nice. You, exactly. I may not heavy <laughs> have even gotten to the oven yet. So I got to also be able to understand that if you're progressing and you're building and you're working something, a woman can get behind progress and momentum. But like you momentum. said, I can't be looking at your baking process and judge it against a bakery. Yo, so first off, I wish we would have had this clip because this is so relevant because it's a clip that's going viral right now about a young lady saying that, you know, men shouldn't date unless they have $50,000 in the bank. And she made a comment about, because I don't want to make it a financial how much money, mm -hmm. you know, men should have, but she made a comment like, yeah, you got this guy, he's wearing the same jeans every day. And it's funny because I thought about a time where I used to wear the same jeans every day. Yeah. I was still make I was make, I sh I'm not saying that I should have been wearing the same jeans every day, <laughs> but I was making a lot more than fifty thousand. Yeah. But my mindset at the time Come was, on. I hey, I gotta put these building pieces in place before I start investing in rocking this more than one jeans. Come Cause on. right now, all it is takes precedence. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the reason I bring that up is because I really do think people can have this, you know, vision of what you represent. And they not even looking at all the things that's going on in the background because it may look like you're wearing the same jeans every day, but you, you know, two, one, two steps away from being a multimillionaire. Yes, so I, we want, we want the post. We want to, we want to look rich. Yes. And there's a difference between rich and wealthy. Mm. Facts. Billionaires dress broke. Mm -hmm. They don't even want you to see it. <laughs> they don't, they, I know I'm talking about. These billionaires who are in the same sweats, you see them walking down the street and you would never know. Mm. Yep. Because once you reach a place of success, you realize what really matters. Mm. So if you're judging someone based on how they present themselves, and I do believe in keeping yourself up, I do believe. But if you're judging someone based on, well, okay, if you're wearing the same jeans, yeah. okay, if we really want to break it down, that could be a billionaire tendency. Right. <laughs> But we got to start looking at things differently. Like, okay, he's wearing the same shoes. Okay, if he's baking, though, mm -hmm. right? It's a, why? Why are you wearing the same jeans? It, yeah. These may be my favorite jeans. Yeah. Like, baking. they may be the work jeans. It's, <laughs> <laughs> they may be the. Grind at least he's consistent, jeans. right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but just levels to it. It's levels. Yeah. To it. It's nuances to everything. Yeah. Is what I'm communicating. Yeah. And uh, go ahead. And I wanted, you know, speaking of just things that you know, because we're talking about vulnerability. Okay? Yes. Oh, my goodness. And this really hurt my feelings. I'm going to be vulnerable with y'all because I was watching the Super Bowl last night. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Got to the halftime show. Mm. You know, my, my boy Usher, he represents Atlanta, man. You know, and it's <laughs> he another. He said he brought the world to the eight. Yeah. It, I'm telling yeah. you. First off, all of those, I mean, all of the people he brought out was phenomenal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he went on the, the whole spectrum. Like, had her out there. Little, every, everything. I won't talk about it too much. But I will talk about, you know, it's a part of the performance that had the group me's going nuts. Mm -hmm. And I want Lana to go ahead and pull up this photo real quick. Because we are talking about vulnerability. Okay. <laughs> Now your brand, and let, let me know if I'm if I if right or wrong on that. I'm looking yes. at y'all face. Yes. In my opinion, mm -hmm. if I associate with, with myself with you, you are my woman. I own you. You you, you know we we doing life together. We partners. I'm being vulnerable because I'm associating just like you associating your brand with each other. So with certain things that you do in public, that could have a positive or negative reaction or consequence for. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about this specific photo. I'm pull that up again. Because I really want to know, is this is is it insecure of me and all the other men in the world? To my opinion, ninety nine point nine percent of men, right? To be upset if their woman, although a professional, is caught with a photo like that. And by the way, we need that in the poll too, because we need we need to drop that in the poll. <laughs> yeah, is this yeah. A, is this an ego thing, right? Or or is this something else? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what the people say because we're going to drop that here. And, and by the way, before we get into this here, I need everybody here to just like this so we can spread this amazing message with these brothers here, what they're doing right now, all over the YouTube street. So hit that like button right now and subscribe as we are halfway through this joint. A little bit more probably than halfway through. Go ahead and hit that. And the poll is dropping. Ryan is about to drop this because we got to get you. We got to know your point. Exactly. Of view I'm trying to think of a way to position this poll. Is this inappropriate? I'm trying to think. Help me, help me out with, with I, fashion. I, mean, I would keep it even simple. Was Usher right or wrong? <laughs> <laughs> is it, no, no. Is it Usher? Is it Usher or is it? Is it? Oh, 
know what? Is, got, what? It, is this you know true. what? Is this inappropriate? Yes or no? Is this inappropriate? Yes or no? Is mm-hmm. this inappropriate for a wife? Or because oh. she's a wife. See, Ryan, mm-hmm. no, at least layers to it. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fine for a wife. Yes and no. Let's do that. And we got the husbands on the panel too. So I mean, Come what on. better way to get the answer to this question here tonight? Come on. Was is this picture here? <laughs> so so there's layers to this. Go right? ahead. So it's, it's easy to look at that and just yeah. say, okay. Usher was out of pocket. I don't think that they needed that type of chemistry. There's so many performances that could happen where individuals, they, they we know Usher, we know Alicia Keys. I don't believe he had to, you know, wrap his arms around her like that. However, on the other side of that, let's talk about acting and entertainment. There are so many situations where they have to illustrate and demonstrate romance. So we're not talking about, I, I don't look at them as uh, the standard of the man of God and, and the, the woman of God, the first lady, or these are entertainers. And so there was rehearsal. <laughs> Swiss could have came to rehearsal. There could have been conversations before. You know how us she is. Let them know that you don't have to do. I mean, there was so Slam. much. There's so many precautionary things that could have happened before that event. Yes, she's laughing and smiling. But who knows how she really felt. I think Usher kind of overdid it. However, with everything that happened, rehearsals, all of these things, this is not, that's not the first time they were on that stage. Things were talked about. It could have been prevented it if they wanted it to be presented by the looks of it from the off- offset. Just looking at it, of course, it looks inappropriate. However, they're entertainers. So it's just like that's what mm. these types of entertainers do. So it's just like that's, mm. that's them. That's that's their world. So I'm not going to jump on the bag wagon and say, oh, Swiss should be mad. Like um, Swiss should know about it. Swiss, Alicia, Alicia Keys should know about it. Usher should, should already know. Now, when he be going to those, those Vegas performances and just grabbing people just off earth, that's different than a Super Bowl performance. Mm-hmm. That's practice. That's rehearsed. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so many layers. Yeah. So many layers. Because <laughs> here's, here's these the husbands now. These are husbands, ladies. Listen to these men. So, I'm always, I'm always going to go look first, man first, right, mm-hmm. in terms of accountability. One, if when I watched it, it appeared to me that that was not rehearsed, Mm -hmm. that Usher winged it by her response because it almost caught her off guard. Absolutely. And she like smiled like, oh, my God. This is him doing him. She's a professional. This is. He's a professional. That's what she or she's she was being a professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are there are aspects of it. And then we don't know to the depth of all of their relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Like if Swiss and Alicia actually look at Usher like a brother, um, would Swiss necessarily have a problem with it for real? Um, I think also yeah. too, we gotta consider the industry is because if we flip it and we look at Swiss Beats videos and how he does music, you know, does he have half naked women in his videos? Are they like people or him? Like, so I think at the same time, mm. we don't know the the parameters behind the scenes as what sets the foundation of That's acceptable, right? Mm. Because for instance, if Swiss has all kind of stuff going on in his videos, she would, as a woman who is the reflection of the man, would probably never consider that there's an issue with something like that that took place. Mm -hmm. So you have those many unknowns, but just from a standpoint of, we saw how Usher with the whole Kiki um, um, Palmer Palmer situation with her dude, you know, how that sort of went. We know how he gets down in terms of he just gets in his zone. I I think it's a level of, um, as an entertainer, there still should be a level of respect Respect, and understanding because we've been on stages. Every moment is calculated. Mm. I am never going to be in a space where I'm so zoned out that I risk the image of my marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm never in that zone. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a level of where Usher is, you know, he's doing his thing and he doesn't really have a conscious awareness about this, that it that it actually bothers people. Like he is one of those who's going to perform how he wants to perform. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just I, it's 
you, there's so many unknowns to determine how Swiss would look at it. How does Swiss look at his wife, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if what if if this was um, rehearsed, is this a cry for attention, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we don't. It's so many unknowns. Mm -hmm. How how be ever just at the onset is the Bible says shun the very appearance of evil. Mm -hmm. You make your home look bad, right? Mm -hmm just by a being a married woman and you got this man wrapped around you. That's the industry standard. So I can't put kingdom parameters on the industry, mm. but at the same time, you do have to consider to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, mm -hmm. right? So if I get into that place of knowing however I move mm -hmm. on the world's largest stage, yeah. there are going to be, outlash or consequences good or bad so i mean i think that i i do feel like it was a usher move because how he moves is more so of i'm gonna do what i feel in the moment mm -hmm. and i don't know if there's ever been a space where um usher has been addressed probably not on a situation like this <laughs> right where right. somebody actually stepped to usher and say hey man don't ever do that again don't ever do that again right because you know, the whole Kiki Palmer thing, the dude went at Kiki, right? You know, and so it's there are things and layers to all of it as a because that's 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 our foundational basis is different. Right. So from a not just a husband, but a kingdom husband, right? One, if my wife was to ever present Something like that. Oh, yeah, we got a major issue. Mm -hmm. But in the same light, if I would never present that, right? Because I represent my home first. Mm -hmm. But Usher, a single man out here, he trying to be, you know, still a sex symbol, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's you put yourself in situations you don't know. You can't control anything that happens on that stage. You, you you almost have to just react to it. Mm -hmm. So so with, with all due respect to Alicia Keys too, because I because I'm glad you said uh, you, both of y'all mentioned the nuances. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that she intentionally did anything to right. position you know her and Swiss Beats to be inappropriate because right. like you said, you never know mm -hmm. kind of what was happening. Mm -hmm. We just looking at just just it's making just the, the yeah simple assumption if this is a wife, this is a not her husband. Is this inappropriate or not? Now, I will preface also by saying that if a man walks up on a wife, there's still all also ways that she can maneuver out of it. Mm -hmm. right. right? When he walk up behind her, she could have spin out and smiled mm -hmm. and start yeah. dancing, dancing or something. Yeah. But she leaned in and smiled and like, you know. Through the head back. Through yeah. the head back. But so, now you never know what kind of pressure you never can't know. come with that. The Super you Bowl is a know. big spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? But I just want to want to let that be known. There are still ways, even if you get into a tight spot, that you can maneuver out that guy. Right? <laughs> yes, yeah, you can. Your wife gonna have to pop but, lock out of here. Right. She gonna, <laughs> let me Barry Sanders in there. Right. Better get up but, out of there. But no, no, I'm, I'm glad you said that. And what, what I think is most important that Will just stated is you specifically said you're home first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. That has to be considered because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people that's like, no, it's professional. No, it's the Super, Sp Super Bowl. And my thought is, man, like when is, is all that more important than what's going on at the crib? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I also want to address another aspect of that, too, because, you know, it, matter of fact, let me read the poll first. Then we'll just another aspect. Mm -hmm. The poll was, is this inappropriate? Throw at the photo again. Is this inappropriate for a woman that's in a serious relationship? Throw that poll up real quick. And the aspect that I want to cover with this, because 54% of people say absolutely, but you got 46% of people that are saying, it's half the people, okay, that are saying, no, don't be insecure. It's that hand with the glove, though. That's a little low. It's low. Yeah, that's, that's a, a low. little low. <laughs> it's low. That's a little low, brother. Yeah. It's low. Honestly, it's, low. it's it's, it's really too much. And the thing is, it's ladies that are, def that are defending this. Mm. I understand the sentiment. You know, because it's it's nuances of that too. Why people are defending it, but I do think it can be it can really give young women out there the wrong impression about how to protect your man's reputation. Mm -hmm. And now, let's say Swiss Beats is absolutely fine with this, mm -hmm. and he was at the rehearsal, and this is the exact thing that's happening. That still doesn't negate that 
thousands of men upon men, even the ones that in his closest circles, this could have negatively damaged the way they see their relationship. Mm -hmm. How serious it is, what kind of openings or cracks in the kingdom it might be. Mm -hmm. It's so many things. So I want you guys to, 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 to give us some insight. What is some ways that a woman can, or things that a woman can do to protect her man's reputation? Mm. Yeah. So I think that um, first and foremost, you can't protect what you don't understand. Mm. So we first got to do the deep work of, do I actually know who my husband is? Like, do I know what he stands for, what he represents? Um, have, do I have an understanding of the type of man that I'm connected to? Because what happens is if I don't know you and I don't know the depths of you and I haven't learned you and I don't have an awareness as to where you he you are headed, because I think a lot of times reputation is risked when we don't have vision for future, mm -hmm. right? I can risk it all right now if I don't have an understanding of where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. It's It's the delayed gratification of knowing that I'll wear one pair of jeans because I'm building something, right? So if I have an awareness of not just who you are and where you are now, but where you're headed, mm -hmm. then I have more of an understanding of why I need to protect it, mm -hmm. right? Like right. you got to make it make sense to a woman. And in a way, after you get that to, to the point where she understands your reputation, who you are, what you're building, what your potential is, what are, all of that type of stuff, after you get there, then I think it's it behooves a man to also have conversations of yes. these are the things that matter to me, yes. right? Like, have we had conversations on friends of the opposite sex, right? Because if you are at lunch with your guy friend and my homie sees you, he gonna hit my line. He sure will. Hey, your girl out here with another dude, mm -hmm. right? So we gotta have those conversations as mm -hmm. to how do we maneuver? Because I got to give you the vision, right? I, we got to lay it out so you know that this is not cool with me, right? Mm -hmm. These are things that matter to me, and this is how I want us to represent not just my, repre my reputation, but our relationship. Because I think oftentimes when we talk about, you know, protecting a man's reputation, a lot of stuff can come across very one-sided, mm. right? Like, this is what you do for me. I am, you know, this. Mm. I'm the man. You need to be protecting my reputation, X, Y, and Z. But meanwhile, every time you're talking to a girl, you're smiling all, <laughs> you got your arm around it, you got, right. you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's that type of situation where a lot of stuff is very one-sided. So it's how are we going to protect the rep the reputation of our relationship mm. and not just the reputation of my name. Mm. I like right? that. So I think having a more collaborative effort because it doesn't matter what you say, hey, don't go out here and do this. If you are doing it, mm -hmm. you are going to give her the green light to say, but you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So I can't respect what you say because I'm watching what you do. Mm. So I think that first, having an understanding of where you are, who you are, and where you're headed, vision, but then also, let's outline some parameters. Let's, let's set some boundaries. How do we play on this court? Mm -hmm. Like, how do we maneuver? What's our flow? What's okay? Is it cool if I go hang out, you know, X, Y, Z? Is, is, is if I'm in the studio at night, like, and it's late, and it's women in the studio, how do you, like, those are the conversations they should be having. Mm -hmm. Because when you leave gray areas, and you just, you do your thing and I do my thing, you're going to set yourself up for mm -hmm. a situation like this. So it's aspects of, hey, this is how we move. Mm -hmm. We don't do this. We don't do that. When we something happens, we share it with one another. Mm -hmm. So it's having those things. That's how I think you protect the reputa uh, reputation of your relationship and not just, you need to protect my name, mm. right? Because if you just worry, if I'm only worried about protecting my name, then I will protect my name at your expense. Mm. Wow. So I got to be in a space where I'm like, okay, it's not about me. If we're going to build, we're going to build, mm. right? And as a wife, we're connected. We're building. So I got to figure out, one, how do I model that before you? And also at the same time, how do I create a space where we are on the same page 
And I don't think we have enough conversations about everything. Like even the little nuanced thoughts mm -hmm. that the fleeting thoughts that go through your mind that you say, hmm, I wonder, have a conversation about that. Because the more you communicate, the, that's how you find the cracks. You find cracks in communication. Mm -hmm. And if you use communication to find cracks, they never turn into canyons. Mm -hmm. Because now we're on the Super Bowl stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then now it's a, it's a, it's a real canyon for real. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and even if that's the case, so here's the thing, because I understand what people say, it's not her fault, right? So there are a couple of things that happened, like even the Super Bowl I had problems with. You know, that kind of had me like, mm, but then also, you know, when Travis Kelsey ran into his coach, right? right? There are opportunities of, if, even if that's a space where it was unintentional, there's a way to counteract the narrative, right? She could have very well went on IG later that night to say, great performance. Boy, Usher surprised me coming up behind me like that. You know, that's my bro, X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. In a way that you can get ahead of it mm -hmm. versus just leaving it to the narrative, mm -hmm. right? Like if you have an opportunity, you can do some damage control so that you, so at least people know whose side and what stuff, what, what side of the line you stand on, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If something happens that's out of your control, it's easy to say, hey, that's a quick post in the story and everybody will reshare it because mm -hmm. everybody's watching you now. Mm -hmm. That was crazy. I, I never thought that that was going to happen or something. You know what I mean? Like, Because yeah. that's a way where you're not just protecting the reputation of him. This, this union matters to me. Yeah. And how people view that matters to me most. Yeah. You know, no, it's so you know, interesting because just, I'm going to be honest with you, looking at the chat, it's incredible. What was it saying? Because a lot of the ladies just in general just feel like, look, it's just not that deep. But see, it's it, ego. And I want to, and I, I would we actually talk, wait, 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 hold on. We're talking about too. emotional vulnerability. Yeah. If it's a man that's saying this does not make me happy, even because it's men everywhere saying this is not making me happy. Yeah. Right. And your <laughs> right. response after watching the first hour of this video is this insecure? That's the exact opposite of being open <laughs> to true. emotional vulnerability. Very true. So I'm very that's confused about what's going on here. But see, that's the thing. It's easy to say that, yeah, I want a man to be vulnerable and say what he think until you actually get confronted with them thoughts. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because that's the reality of the situation. And you got to understand, too, it's a layer, ladies. Let me tell you, I've dated a lot of women. The women that I didn't care how they acted in public, trust me, they was a certain kind of woman to me. Mm. And I treated them a certain kind of way. Mm. The women that I actually cared about how they presented themselves and how they moved a certain way, there was a level of investment I had in that woman. So I think it's okay if a man just in general, and take it away from the celebrities and let's bring it down to earth on day to day. Yeah. If a man is not happy with the etiquette that may have went down in a relationship or how he feels you may have represented him on a real world basis, that not, may not necessarily be just, don't just charge that to ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't just always charge that to insecurity. Really listen to where that's coming from. Yeah. Because again, you want your man to be vested in you and care about your whereabouts in that way. Mm -hmm. And trust me, that can be very healthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because the other side of the spectrum of him not caring at all, I promise that's you that's dangerous. an issue. But it's oh, not yeah. just, dangerous. it's not, I think some people are thinking, oh, because he just wants to protect himself and protect his reputation. When I love a woman, I don't want my woman looking bad. Yeah. I don't even want you looking bad because he said that this is a us thing. Both eyes die for the we. When you make you look bad, you make the marriage look bad, you make me look bad, you make us look bad, you make the family look bad, That's you make right. the legacy look bad. It's not just about, man, you making me look bad out here. I'm ashamed. No. Do you know how much I honor you? When you present yourself, your upgraded self, in a way that makes you look like a downgraded version of yourself, that displeases me because I see you so highly. I respect you too much for you to to display yourself in a way that's not respectable. And so it's not ego. It's because I can't, like my kids, like people be like, man, are you putting your kids in these types of clothes and you got to make sure the kids' hair is brushed? Yeah. Some people, my, my wife used to say, like, you don't want your kids to look bad. That makes you look bad. And I'm like, I love my kids. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. I want my kids to look good yeah. for themselves. Yeah. Because I love them and I, I see them so highly. 
I, I love them so much and I never want them to present them less than I know they are. Yeah. And so for those that are saying, man, that's just ego, that's kind of, that's blindsided. They're blindsided to what's really happening right now. And if you come to me with an issue, if I love, if my wife came to me with an issue, come on, it now becomes my issue. That's issue. Mm, exactly. That's facts. If she says, I don't like when you do this, I don't care what it is. Come on. This made me feel uncomfortable or sad or angry. That's a five alarm fire for me, bro. Because I never want you to feel that way. Wow. So if you bring something to me, guess what I'm doing? I'm making adjustments. Come on. Now. Imagine your wife came to you and said, there's this guy at my job and he's making me feel uncomfortable. You ready to fight. You ready to pick up the <laughs> burner. You ready to go do something. How come it doesn't take that? You don't have that same type of fire when she tells you, you make me uncomfortable when you do this. You should be having that same fire ready to destroy mm knock down and erase anything that's causing her to feel that way because you care about her well-being even if you are the threat yeah. even if you got to protect her from you even if you have to make adjustments to you why you want to knock everybody head off but you don't want to figure yourself out mm. <laughs> I, isn't that interesting mm. just let let somebody just let my wife <clears throat> tell me there was a dude and, and he was saying things that made me feel disrespected soon as she gets it there was a dude it just had to be a dude. That's all I need to hear. And I'm ready to go take somebody head off. I believe it. That's a fact. But she's telling you, you disrespecting her, and you real slow to make adjustments. I don't know. And it's one side is still, too, in the industry is because we don't have the same type of outlandish outroar if Swiss Beats was on stage no. and a girl was twerking in front of him. She could twerk I think that, up, down on, on his shoulders. People would no, not right. be like, right. oh my God, he look how he's representing his home. So there's still a misogynistic view to some of this, right? Because it, it is, man, it's, 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 it's on a tilt. Come it's on. on a tilt. And yep. we are quick to, we want to, you know, demonize her and she should have did this and she should have did that at the same time. We got to look at it across the board. And if we're going to start talking about accountability, we about to uproot the whole industry. Come on. Like, yep. because it's, but we operate from different principles. Yeah. So in that world, it's kind of different. But man, to know that one, but the, another takeaway is to know that one innocent gesture has the power to send shock waves through the entire community that you're connected with. Mm -hmm. When you know that, you move different. Got to. That, listen, that's all I need to be said because that, that's my thing. You, you, because let me read this super chat real quick. This, this, this is very relevant mm -hmm. to that. Shout out to LaShawn Tapper. She says, Swiss already came out with a statement. He said the public is focusing on the wrong thing. They were performing. Swiss was completely okay with it. Mm -hmm. So shout out to LaShawn for coming, coming out with that. But I think that relates to what you're saying because if you know something is on the line of inappropriateness, whether you're okay with it or not, let's just not do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And I remember when I was young, my, my mom actually told him one of my friends. One of my friends came over. It was four of us. We were all playing Nintendo. And um, he was just cussing, a lot of cussing. Mm -hmm. So my mom sent him home. And, you know, I ended up asking him, you know, what's the deal after he got sent home? He, he got in trouble for it. And, but the thing is, he was upset be that he got in trouble because he always cusses at home. At his house, he can cuss. And what he said, what his dad said was like, what does what you do here got to do with what you did at Ms. Ms. Ketchum's house? Mm. And that was the thing. And I think that even as men, and it would never be a day where I would be okay with somebody doing that to my woman. Mm -hmm. But maybe there are things that I may be okay with. I can't I'm not imagine that, but that just doesn't fit out in the public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that even as a man, even if you certain things you are okay with, it's just not healthy to do for the sake of what you're saying, that collective reputation. Mm -hmm. Because when you present the things in a certain way, because this is the thing, it's people that you trust that, you know, just people can do crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you show these levels of weakness, people will try things. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are thinking, hey, it's entertainment, it's entertainment. But it's so many lower levels, or not, I want to say lower levels. I would say comfortable levels that this can happen. You could be a, a young lady or a man in sales. And you think, hey, if I flirt a little bit, 
I can get that extra sale. Mm -hmm. My thing as a husband is like, well, if you got to do all that flirting to get sale, then we need to think of a new profession. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be so sales training. We need to get sales training. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I don't, I don't think that women should just take what Swiss Beast's statement is, because like you said, it's nuances to everything. Mm -hmm. For all we know, he head could be popping off his shoulders about this thing. You PR, know what I mean? PR team put that P one PR out. team put that together, right? <laughs> so I don't think that we should take these things and just draw all these conclusions about it being okay. I really do think that some things, yes, you look at the individual people involved and if they're okay, but you also have to consider what the public perception is, especially when it comes to friends friends and family because you just don't want to risk the groups or the the partnerships reputation i just don't think it's worth now now yes. let me ask y'all let me ask y'all this here because if if we can also make this make sense because imagine this had brought a rift between a couple and imagine we probably broke some trust we lost some respect we're in a very broken place as a relationship and it's a lot of relationships here we talk to her, listen, a lot of the emails that come in, that's what they're centered about. They're centered around, I'm in a very broken place in a relationship. We're not trusting right now. We're not loving right now. We're not connected right now. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the rebuilding process there. Because when you get to that place in the relationship, how do you rebuild? And what does that look like? So rebuilding, I think... You can't, I don't think you can effectively rebuild if you aren't first coming in with a desire to truly rebuild, not to get revenge and not to get your way. It, rebuilding requires a level of we're going to come in and figure out how can we collectively put this back together. Mm -hmm. And when there's a breach, oftentimes the person who calls the breach has to do the legwork to get that sort of process started, right? If there's a breach, you know, there's a space where if you're the person who calls the breach, there's almost a space where you have to go in knowing that if I'm going to commit to this rebuilding process, there's a lot of brunt that I'm going to have to take, right? And I don't have the luxury to take it personal, how she heals or how he heals, mm -hmm. right? If we're going through this process, now, I'm not saying that you 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 got to be abused or you got to I'm not saying that. But if someone is giving you the cold shoulder, if they're not as talkative, if they're not engaging with you, you got to know that one breach has knocked down probably three fourths of your building. And you you what we think is, OK, it was one time, mm. but this one time literally took out three fourths of what we built because now I've questioned everything, mm -hmm. right? And now it's gonna take you through some time, some energy, some effort of showing me with actions and tangible ways that you are committed to this rebuilding process and not just that you recognize the wrong, but that you've made a, an adjustment, mm -hmm. a change. Come on. Because we wanna rebuild, okay, well I just want you to trust me again, I want you to trust me again, but then you're still doing the same type of stuff. You're running in the same circles. You are exchanging with the same type of people. So it's in the aspect of saying, okay, if there's a breach, I need to make some immediate adjustments and then I gotta be committed to this process of rebuilding it and I can't dictate how long it takes for you to heal. I can't say, well, I've been doing this for six months. It don't matter. Mm. I don't care how, because people heal differently, mm. right? And then also knowing too, is that when you're rebuilding, what a lot of people do is they try to rebuild alone. Mm. And, you, and when you're broken, and a lot of times when you're the person who did the breaking, you don't have the lessons or tools to show you how to rebuild that. Mm -hmm. It's now you're just trying stuff and you don't know when you, you hear people say when they're in that space and I'm just trying the best I can, I don't know what to do. This is how you know you need to get help, mm. right? If there's a breach here and you don't have the awareness or the wisdom to, to know what changes to make, how to implement and how to restructure things, I gotta get with a contractor to help me understand the blueprints and the plans 
of how can I rebuild this? But what we do is when things are broken, especially as men, a lot of times we want to maintain a level of pride. Come on. And it's broken, but I don't want nobody to know it's broken. So, you know, when they're like, yo, man, your wife, she seemed like she's angry a lot. Oh, man, you know, it's just, she's just going through some stuff right now. You know, we just, instead of having a, an awareness to say, man, I messed up and I need to figure something out. I don't know how to to rebuild this. Or if she's, you know, he, he is now distant and he don't want to come home instead of now getting angry at his actions. Now I got to get to the place to say, okay, well, what can I do? Like it's, but we gotta, we gotta start with accountability. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta own what I did. And then I also have to own the process because we'll own it, but then we won't give people the freedom or the luxury to rebound in the way that they need. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, one of my pet peeves is when I hear it and when I see it and when it's happened to me is I said, I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm sorry is, is nothing more than an acknowledgement of wrong. It has done nothing. Wow. When you say I'm sorry, it is literally just an acknowledgement that I own that I messed up. It doesn't heal anything. Hmm. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't make somebody feel good. Like people think, well, I said I'm sorry. Okay, you did the absolute most minimal foundational thing before we could even get to the work. Mm. But I'm sorry. It's, it's, and we put so much weight on it. I apologized. Okay. And while that may be good, that's only an acknowledgement. Wow. That's only saying, I know I did wrong. Yeah. Okay. Now what? <laughs> now we got to show and prove. Right. And that's what we got to get in community. And that's why, like, we're even doing this event in, in April, uh, talking about um, the titles We Need to Love, of creating spaces where people can come together to heal, yeah. where they can come together and have language and understanding. And it's a space where we're going to, there are literally some, some ceremonial things that we're going to do to create a space of affirmation, where there's going to be a healing moment, where we're going to let some stuff go. It's a way that we're going to find a pathway to getting people to healthy relationships. But we got to know that if we're going to rebuild, think about it, man. Like in a tornado and a house is torn down, it may take a long time to rebuild. And the whole first half of the process may be clearing the wreckage. Come on. That's crazy. The whole first half may be me getting all the dirt out. Mm. Maybe moving all of the dead planks. Mm -hmm. I need to do the removal process. I got to get all this stuff before I can even assess the damage. I got to clear the wreckage. And how do we get to a space where now if I mess up something and there's a breach, I got to clear the wreckage. Mm. Like I got to, okay, before we can even start, before we, I can figure out what I need to do and how I need to, my whole concern now is I got to clear the wreckage. Uh -huh. I got to take it. I got to own it. I got to have accountability. I got to be in a space where you know my heart, where I am, where you can see it in my eyes. You can feel it in my interactions, where I'm willing to do whatever it needs to be to create a space where you are willing to rebuild. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we think that I'm sorry is just the check mark. Now that I said I'm sorry, you should be willing to rebuild because I said I'm sorry. And the, I'm sorry is just the acknowledgement. If you said I'm sorry and someone said, so? <laughs> people get mad. Oh, how are you going to do that when I said them? That's just your acknowledgement. That's not, that's not the work. No work. None. And we are so quick to throw out I'm sorry and then think that that is to, like, fix the situation. And that's not even the part that... If a tornado blew down a house, I'm sorry is just showing up to the wreckage. Mm. I haven't cleared anything. This is me saying I see that this house has been blown down. Mm. And now it's time to get to work. Dang. 
So li listen, fellas, y'all y'all turning up right now. I want to take some time, read these super chats, then I want to uh, get Ezekiel to pop this next one off because y'all going nuts right now. Facts. So let me start with these super chats. Shout out to Nora, Nora Jean. She says, amazing insight. Thank you, gentlemen. Shout out to Culture Leotards, Couture Leotard. She says, these two always give so much bread when they share with the community. We not full yet, so keep them coming. <laughs> Shout out to Ikene. <laughs> Men should be careful how they express their vulnerability. Expressing vulnerability to someone you're supposed to protect is not a good idea. Mm. Okay, Kenny still wow. he still he still a little he still on the on the shack end of the spectrum. I, I, I right saw now. the African outfit, so I, that's my people. I <laughs> right. <from>. And, <laughs> and shout out to Sh Shamira, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Shamira, a how does men ego block a real connection? So before you answer that, Ezekiel, mm. it, it's some, some mad confusion going on, both from both men and women, about this ego thing, because mm. it's like. Men, you, you want to be ambitious. You want a man to take care of himself. You want a man to be competitive, but you don't want a man to have ego. Mm -hmm. it, it don't make sense. So real quick, I want to give everybody the definition of ego, mm -hmm. and then I want you to help us out to let us know how ego can either positively or negatively impact the connection in a relationship. Okay? okay? Right. So here we got the definition. A person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Now, I don't know, but that sounds like something important to have to me. <laughs> so you let me know. What, what, you, you let me know. What, am I wrong on that or what? I think that's a really flattering uh, use of the term ego. I think <laughs> culturally we understand ego as some level of arrogant, arrogance and just having a blind spot to others. Mm. Narcissism and egotistical, they kind of work hand in hand the way we culturally accept the term ego. But having some self-value, self-importance is really, really important and is necessary. In fact, if, if we get biblical, the scripture tells us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Mm. So if this is recommended by Jesus for us to love others with the type of love that we're supposed to love ourselves, then that's some solid love. That means that by the prerequisite for loving others is having a strong foundation of love for oneself. So it's really important for men to be able to see their own value, for them to love themselves, for them to, to think highly of themselves, but not in a way that is at the expense of loving others. In fact, loving ourselves gives us the foundation and empowers us to love others. It is the outpour of loving ourselves that allows us to love others. So how can ego block a real connection? when ego is the type of uh, self-importance that makes one above another. When you look at someone from, the lens, from, from a lenses that has literally shielded yourself from seeing other people's needs, what he's talking about is being able to handle someone's heart and accepting and receiving someone's vulnerability. It's impossible when someone is blinded by their own egotistical ways and selfishness. It's impossible for a selfish individual to handle a vulnerable heart because a, vo a selfish individual can only see as far as their own desires. I cannot help you because I'm only seeking to help myself. Mm. I'm so self-serving. I don't have enough serve for you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so people that try to enter relationships with people that are solely self-serving try to open up to them and they, they're giving them a platter to, 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 to try to handle, but this person has their own platter for them to, to pass on, for them to be served with. So it's an it's a impossible situation. So one, I think a characteristic to look for is, is a person have, does a person have a tendency and inclination towards selflessness? You can mm. find this out in the way that they handle their family members, in the way that they live daily lives in their own community. Do I see hints of selflessness in their lives that is also a way for you to be able to find hey is this person a safe space because a safe space is someone who cares enough yeah. to see my heart to see what i'm going through um this vulnerability the found on a foundational level an individual that is willing to see me has already laid the foundation of a safe space for me and someone who is selfish is so blinded by themselves 
that they can't see anyone else to help. And so it's a it's kind of it works against them. It's a catch 22 and it doesn't work. So how does ego get in the way? Ego is a blinder. It's the blinder of anyone else because you're so consumed with looking at yourself in a negative way. Not looking at yourself to right. build, to build yourself up, not looking at yourself to to correct yourself and to challenge yourself, but looking at yourself because you can only see yourself as the one that needs to be served. I think that's a great breakdown. Yeah, so yeah. good. So good. I just I, I echo that. I think there's healthy doses of everything. Mm-hmm. Like fear, when it becomes too much, it can grip you. Yeah. But there are certain aspects of it that you need. For protection. And you're more aware, and there are certain aspects of ego. Because if you don't have any, then you become that pushover, and you don't have the drive or ambition to accomplish anything. Mm-hmm. So. It's that blinder. That's yeah. so good, bro. Yeah, man. That's so good. Yes, sir. We yes, got sir. one more super chat that came in, Ryan. Go ahead and check that one out. Let me check this out. So we got a bunch of them came in. Shout out to Ken F for super sending over the super chat. Shout out to Kimberly Moore <laughs> says, emotional healing is a marathon, not a sprint. God Essence sent over super chat. Guys, make sure y'all keep those super chats at 10 or above so I can read them. But some of these are good. So I just want to get, you know, some shout out to them. So shout out to God Essence. She says, can this apply to boyfriend and girlfriend or only marriage? I think these principles are. Yeah, I think right. you, you'll see it before you get married. Hopefully you identify mm. uh, selflessness and selfishness before you get married. Uh, I think the principles of actually committing to journey with someone, you actually have to make a decision to journey with someone. And that's actually going past girlfriend and boyfriend. But the foundation of what you're seeing, you're going to see that beforehand. So okay. Yeah. Shout out to Dance with Faith. And I da- <laughs> Dance with Faith, I wish that we could actually bring you on. We're just having some issues with the audio on the initiation hotline. But... Of course, the answer is yes, of course you can. But she says, hi, the two gentlemen, Will and Ezekiel, on the panel tonight. Can I send them an email on the situation I had with the man before we even went on a date? I'm a Christian, and I feel like they could give me some good Christian advice. And dance with faith. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little nosy. I'm going be honest. I want to <laughs> what know it? what's going on. I want to <laughs> know, like, is there a way, like, if, even if you could whip up the email real quick, and send it over so I can read it and then actually address it on air, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we would have just had you call in, right? And that's going to be info at hardlyinitiated.com. So info at Mm hardlyinitiated.com. And then let me run to this one, and I'm going to put that in the chat, by the way, Dance With Faith. We got another one that came in. Shout out to Zanaya. Okay, she says, "What if you was 100% willing to change behaviors and not just apologize, but they still walk away? Do you allow them to come back if they try?" Mm. So they walk away. Do you allow them to come back after everything is done? They want to come back. Well, it just depends. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll let you answer that one. Go ahead. No, you're on the road, bro. <laughs> no, so, so you try. You tried to apologize, and they walked away. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you have the right and the freedom to move on. If they attempt to come back, it's about discernment where you are. Is this a person that is going to, I can build with for the future? Is this a friend? What is the, what, what box can I put this person in relationally right now? I don't think that it's up to us to answer that question. It's up to where you are and where that person can journey with you. And everybody doesn't have to journey with you towards marriage. Some people can journey with you for a particular season so in good. particular categories of your life. They could be a business partner. They can be an associate. They don't always have to be a wife or a husband. So it's up to you where you are um, and locking them on that discernment. And that's a spiritual gift, my brother. I want to ask this here, though, because let's talk about this real quick before we go to the next one, because I think that's a good point, because I think there's some relationships that are just beyond repair. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, it's some relationships. Let's just stop trying to fix up all the demolition that took place. (laughs) All right. Let's jump ship. Let's chalk up an L. Let's learn from this situation Mm -hmm. and let's move on. Mm -hmm. And I don't think some of us know. When I'm, I'm talking about relationships dragging out people's lives 10 years yeah. that they have no business being in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The chapter has ended a long time ago yeah. and we just dragging it out. Yes, if you can give people some game Come on. at when to know to walk away when the relationship is beyond rebuilding, mm-hmm. how do I know that I, need, I just need to call this joint quits? So I think like everything is layers to it. I think also at the same time is... You got to assess what caused the damage, right? So if this was a fundamentally core character flaw, right? Like if this was something that 
you know, like a situation like the Super Bowl, if a guy walked up and put his arms around your girl, you know, and that caused a breach, that may not necessarily be the reason why to end it, right? Um, I think that if we have a level of honesty within the relationships, we can all, a lot of times, trace back some issues or places that needed to be addressed before we got to the breach. Mm -hmm. So if there are places where she needed to heal or places where he needed to heal and that unhealed space caused a breach, then that's a, that's a perspective thing now, okay? Because if I only have known <clears throat> the unhealed version of you, have we really ever had a chance? <clears throat> Excuse me. Have we really ever had a chance at a relationship? That's great. Because I've only known the broken, broken version of you. Yep. So <clears throat> certain things then, too, you can tell how someone is by how they are. Um, thank you, brother. You can tell how someone is by how they handle a breach. You know, it, it shows a lot about, a, a, especially a man's character, about when and how he handles the breach. If, he's, if it motivates him to make changes, um, how they respond to it can determine. And is this a habitual thing? And then you also have just your deal breakers, mm -hmm. right? Your negotiables and non-negotiables. And I think everybody should have those. And where we start settling is when we start making our non-negotiables negotiable. If there are certain things for you like that are just a no go, right? Like if cheating, if it's disrespect, if it's certain things, I've communicated these and you have done these things, that may be an indication of this may not be it. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you the truth. One of the the easiest ways to determine is if I'm tapped in with God because I really can't discern for real because that's a spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have that fundamental aspect intertwined within my relationship, everything, <clears throat> excuse me, everything is now up for grabs Yeah, because I don't know. Mm -hmm. And if we don't know, we're going to go by what we feel. Yeah. Uh, so right. if it's, it's, so for me, I think that the, hmm. the outlier here, is, is God involved? Well, well, and well. when a breach happens, have I checked in with him first? Mm. Because this breach could be him saving me from what I don't need to be in. Well, 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 well. So when it happens, can I check in? Hey, God, what's up? Do I even need to go back to this? Like, do I have that type of relationship to I can say, hey, because if not, somebody could plead and cry and pull on your heartstrings long enough that if you're a good person, they can will you back in. Wow. Yeah. So if if you can't rely, I know that as a human being, I can't rely on me to make certain decisions. I got to tap into God mm -hmm. because he sees what I don't see. Come on. He hears what I don't hear. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's the fundamental difference because otherwise, like I said, people can cry, people can... I'm so sorry. I'm going to change. I'm going to change. And then you see that happen and people change momentarily. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they revert right back because mm -hmm. the change was made to try to save and not to try to fix. Mm. Wow. So it's, I mean, if, if it's broken, mm -hmm. how do you tell that it's, if it's beyond repair for me, the God factor is the defining thing because otherwise it's just trial and error. Mm. Because if I don't have an awareness of, insider knowledge everything is trial and error mm. because this could happen and this could be an opportunity for us to grow i may need to take some accountability that i attribute to some of these things that led to this is this an opportunity for us to come to a better understanding are we both unhealed or is this god rescuing me mm. <laughs> because how god rescues a lot of times is he breaks it wow when God rescues, he don't like just come and just pick you up and you float out of it and you just, oh, everything has happened. When God, a lot of times when he rescues you, oh, he, he breaks it. <laughs> when you pray that prayer, I'm telling you, I've prayed that prayer. Oh, God, yeah. if this ain't for me. Oh, yeah. If this ain't it. Oh, yeah. And then guess what? Boom. Snap. 
<laughs> and then you looking like, but then you got to have that awareness. Okay, I just prayed for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this just happened. Okay, this may be mm-hmm. God saving me. Mm-hmm. But we get so loyal. We're loyal to dysfunction for so long just because I feel like this, well, you know, this is, I got to stick it out. This is opportunity for us to grow. I got to show that I'm not, you know, that I'm not weak and it, you, it's longevity. And the, it's, chain, the chains I know. The chains I know are better than the freedom unknown. We did a, a, a show on that. But um, it's getting in the space of knowing, man, like, mm. but I, I, I can't rely on me mm. because your heart, all of us sitting at this table, a good man and a good man's heart can oftentimes be easily pulled in mm. by seeing the emotional anguish of someone else wow. yeah so i can't rely on that mm. i gotta get to god god if this is not for me show me make it clear make it plain that's what i'm telling you brother i don't know how people go through life without a relationship with god like it's just for me to have the awareness of God and the Holy Spirit being able to direct me and to save me and to protect me because he sees what I don't see. Like, man, it is a game changer, bro. Yeah. And that's even like that with relationships. Like, just if, if we can stop seeking pleasure so much and get to a gr- delayed gratification state, okay, I need to figure out, can we build together for real, right? Because if we're going to do this for real, we got our entire lives to experience all the pleasure we want to experience with one Mm, another. Yeah. But I just want everything right now. Mm. If it's broken beyond repair, how do I know that? I got to get to God, man. I got to. That's just that's that's just me. You just saved some people right here in the chat. Somebody got God. saved. <laughs> if it was you, put saved in the chat right now. God if that was God. for you. And man, go ahead, Ryan. Go ahead and get these last couple super chats in, man. We about to close it down. Y'all get these last few in because we about to wrap this thing up, y'all. Facts. Real quick, shout out to my girl Yala. She says, love this conversation. I personally feel more protected and safe with a partner who can be vulnerable with me. Because he is showing me a side he doesn't just show anyone. That's next level intimacy. Mm. We didn't even talk about that. Talk about how um, certain levels of, well, I guess really all levels of vulnerability is intimate in this way. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, oh my God, just being vulnerable. It's so funny because naturally I just want to go back to the mindset that Shaq has because <laughs> it's just easier to do that. Ooh. It's just much easier to just be numb. Definitely. And to just be always be protected because you know you can't get it wrong. I mean, you you're so wrong you can't continue to get it wrong. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Damn. But when you really think about you know the opposite of that, which is taking your time and figuring this thing out along the way, allowing that person to you know be open to sharing with you and kind of sharing these moments, it really like that emotional level like. That is the goal. Mm-hmm. It is the goal to be able to get to that point to where you're comfortable with the other person that you're rocking with, that you're going to war with, that they're going to be cool with that. But imagine yeah. an individual that's thinking, I don't want to feel weak. I don't want to put myself in a situation where I feel weak or where she makes me feel weak. So I'm going to hide away into a cave where I can avoid pain. Mm. I'm going to say that again. I don't want to look weak, don't want to sound weak, don't want to be treated as weak. So I'm going to take my strong self into a dark cave to hide from the potential of pain. Strong men don't hide. True strong men Mm. say, where the pain at? I be, I mean, I be looking at the dudes that be most ripped when they be, when they, they, you know, I heard Arnold Schwarzenegger said, it's it's when it hurts the most. Mm. I'm like, bro, you are really tripping. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. That's when he enjoys it. It's it's the I want like he was like when he was saying that I knew what he was talking about. Y'all was looking at him, he was like I want to get dark with you. It's like <laughs> it's this like we have to go past this threshold of the surface to understand true intimacy, sensitivity. And you talked about numbness. That's what it made me think of like. My wife, she says, when I don't want pain, for, for when she doesn't want to go through pain of a childbirth, she wants to get the epidural. But it's the riskiest thing to do. Mm. Wow. Imagine 
wanting to take the path of least pain being the riskiest thing you do. Wow. One wrong move could kill you. Damn. That's an incredible analogy. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it makes me feel like, man, I, I, I almost want to break for someone like Shaq. You look at an individual that's probably 50 or whatever the case may be and has never had an opportunity to live fully, intimately in a space as a full grown man, possibly. Mm. You know, Shaq, we watched him in magic years when he was 19. We don't know when he actually allowed himself to be his authentic self, but you 52, talking about I'll never, never share my true self. Can I tell you something? Men, especially, who are in that space are more prone and easier to cheat. Because we don't risk where we have invested the most. Wow. We don't risk or play with when we have deep investments. But if I am reserving all of my assets, it's very easy for me to be swayed by what feels good or looks good in a moment because I'm not fully invested here. Oh, wow. That's good perspective. That's, man. Because, you know, and really think about oh, that. Wait until the end, too. No, I, I, know, I, thought, I thought we were about to wrap it up, man. We're about to go another two hours. No, but really, but really think about that. When you evaluate the women you might have just dealt with over your span, the women that you were easiest to remove yourself from, mm -hmm. you gave the least to. Yes. Well, and that's in all, in all levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She got the less dates. She got the less conversation. She got the less vulnerability. She mm -hmm. got the less everything. Mm -hmm. No investment there. Mm -hmm. It's just smash and grab. Mm -hmm. Take, 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 take. Wow. And it's very easy to move and operate in that way. Mm -hmm. It's the woman that you really gave them dates to. You're like, oh, hell no, 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 no. <laughs> put that nah. work in. I put that work in. <laughs> in this one, it's the, it's, the, it's the woman you've actually built something with where it really, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Like, it pains you to think about being away from this woman. Yeah. 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 Because I've invested here. Yeah. And you're looking for that ROI. And 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 and, to, and and I would say this, if you if we had to quantify anything a man can give, vulnerability would have literally the highest value. Oh, absolutely. Wow. I mean, what can a man give more to a woman than vulnerability that has any more value Nothing, than his emotional no. than him being emotionally vulnerable? Money, it's not money. Mm. We could throw, we could we, throw, we, we could throw, yeah. Thin, thin. We could throw thirty, yeah. forty dollars on a date. That's yeah. light. Yeah. But to tell you the shit I went through mm. 10, 20 years ago, mm. that I didn't even tell my closest homeboy. Like he don't even know about that. Shit. That there, I, I can't even put a number on that. Mm -hmm. That's good, bro. So yeah. I mean, when you really consider that, if if you even want to consider ladies like where you stand with a guy, what really do you know about him? Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, what a better measure of how invested he is in me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not looking at the dude with the bread. You tell me I want a guy with some bread. Okay, you got a guy with some bread and he puts some money. That's the money means nothing. He already has his, he already has an abundance. And if that's the relationship, you mean nothing. Wow. Because I am only giving you what I know will keep you in a space where you're not even trying to get to know the depths of my darkness. So my money that I give you is really just keeping you at bay. Yes. Mm. It's like when you go to the zoo and you or you see animals and you're feeding them from a distance. Like I'll feed you. I'll throw it out there because it'll keep you out there. Mm. Like, but you're not going to walk up to a lion and try to hand feed a lion mm. because you already know the probability this lion could tear my hand off. Right. But what happens when you get to the space where you see the lion and I come close enough mm. to give you a safe space to eat? Mm. Because that is when we're in that space now where, shh, boy, <laughs> I'm not just giving you the things. I'm giving you me for real. There you go. And when I give you me, the essence, the depths, because you said, how much do you know about him? 
And it's even the layers of that. It's not even how much do you know just about him in general. How much do you know about what he carries? Mm. How much do you know about his fears? Mm. How much do you know about his trauma or the pain that he's experienced? How much, how much of the things that you know could penetrate his heart? Because they could know where you went to school. They could know your favorite color. Yeah. They could know what, what sports teams you like. They can know what's your favorite meal and all of that. You know, oh, I know everything about him. Okay. What keeps him up at night? Mm. What, what is the thing that drives his, his mental state consistently? What is he always in fear of that? He always has it brewing. Why can't he rest at night? Mm. What are the things that keep him where he can never just be at home and chill and relax. He always got to be doing something. What's, what's the root? Like how do, like into the essence, when we go back and dig deep, how much of that stuff do you know? Because that's the difference maker. I'm attracted to a woman who is digging into me. Yeah. On that level. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I'm really trying to think about the, you know, how many women, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. no, no, get back to it. Get back to no, it. No, man, I can't. Paul, that was big Paul. Right? Yeah, big, right. uh, <laughs> big Paul. <laughs> That's childish. We had a very childish moment. Y'all gonna let me slide deep. with that or what? Y'all gonna let me slide with that? <laughs> oh my God! But, but no, go no. ahead, go ahead. But I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about my interactions. You know, kind of over the past, my relationships and things like that. But I think that's a very special woman mm. because. That woman has to be so present. She has to be. She has to be in tune with herself mm -hmm. for her e to even have room and and emotional space for her to dig into you like that. Come on. So and, that's that's and, a and lot. That's a good one. Imagine like job applications. The beginning of the application sometimes are two pages. Top of it asks you your name, your address. But as you go further down the application, you get to the second page. They ask you about your work, work history. experience. And then they ask you, have you been convicted? Of Ooh. And mm. so how many of you guys are at the second page? Y'all know, y'all know his achievements, y'all know what kind of car he drives and maybe what car he wants, but y'all ain't talked about the convictions or the history. It's the second page of the application and most don't ever make it to that stage. Everyone stays on the surface and some are not even interested in, in going to the second page mm. of a man. Mm. Because like my brother said, you, you're okay with throwing the breadcrumbs out there and they're happily eating. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have someone, you got to get someone that is dissatisfied with the breadcrumbs that you throw at bay. Ooh. Someone that rejects it and says, I don't even, I don't want another dollar, a date that costs you. I want to know about you. Come on. What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What's important to you? What's inside of you? What matters to you? What do you value? Let's talk about family. Listen. Somebody that actually cares about you for real. I mean, I don't want, like, if I was single, I wouldn't want, like, if I were one of you guys, I wouldn't want to get, simply get with a woman that was asking me about the show. In the first conversation, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Second conversation, maybe. But if we're still talking about Harley initiated on the, on the fourth date, I'm like, okay, this is a wrap. It's mm -hmm. a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> It's a wrap if we're talking about subscribers on the fourth date. Yeah. yeah. It's a wrap if we're talking about what's the next move in this space on the fourth date. You don't want to know about nothing about because this. Because she's the life. Come on, bro. And, and going back to even that big an analogy is, it's, and we got to do another show, too, where I would love to just help. And we're going to do this on the event. You're foolish. <laughs> he is. He sure is. So April 27th, we're doing a live event in Atlanta where we're mm -hmm. going to teach even the aspects of it. It's because a lot of women come to dig, and there is a difference between an archaeologist and a construction worker. I'm out of here. They dig different. Mm. They have different what? tools. When they are digging for fossils, they you see them, they have little small little. Yep. They're trying to scrape. They're very delicate because I can make one, what? one crack in this can destroy the whole texture of what I'm trying to excavate. Ex excavate. Precision is key. It's so you got to know too. I can't go in here if I'm digging for fossils with a. A, a shovel and I'm walking in with a sledgehammer. Come on, let's dig. Mm. Hey, hey, no, no, that's not. In this, where we're going to dig here, we need the right tools. 
Mm. We got to use the right tools because mm. you got to know how to go in and maneuver. And here's the thing is that people who are digging for fossils, oftentimes you got to dig through layers of dirt even before you get to the fossil. Wow. So you can't get into the space where you get fed up because you been went and dug two, three times and we still haven't hit and, you know, because it's it's beneath the surface. Mm-hmm. You just got to keep digging to the mm-hmm. point where it's sometimes it's a patient. It's you got to have the patience. People set up whole campsites where we say, hey, we're not going to move from here until we uh, are able to extract what we came from, mm-hmm. uh, extract what we came for. And we got to be in a space, too, where not only we're saying, OK, yeah, I want to dig. But are we teaching people how to dig? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if I come in with the wrong tools, I'm going to break all of the fossils that we're trying to uncover. Mm-hmm. When I get to the second page, if I'm writing with a Sharpie mm-hmm. and I could mess them and bleed through everything I'm trying to, you know what I mean? So it's, it's what do I use when and how do I use it? Because you can't just go in and think we're just going to demolish everything. When you think about like for me, I'm, I'm about to be 40 years old. When you think about the fact that a lot of people have been this way for decades and they've known you for weeks. Wow. Decades of wiring. And we think it's going to change in two weeks. If I've been this way for 30 years, you got to know it's going to take some time. Mm-hmm. That and it and I gotta know if I'm going to connect and build with you, I gotta know that this is going to be a process, and I gotta be committed to the process. Yes. Because okay, one, do I want to dig deep to find out where where the fossils are? Am I qualified enough to handle the fossils? Because when I get down there and I see this Tyrannosaurus Rex head, <laughs> do I know how to maneuver with it, or am I gonna run and hide? Mm-hmm. Right, and then. I got to know that at the same time, while I'm digging and I'm going through this, these fossils have been down there for a long time, a long time. And once I start digging, I can't start judging you Mm. according to the fossils I find. Mm. Once I'm digging and we finally uncover some stuff, because that's when you hear Shaq, the thing that stood out to me said, because if you do that, they'll throw it back up in your face. Yeah. Because when you start trying to build with unqualified builders, Mm. unqualified builders lay faulty foundations. So when they're trying to build, you got cracks in it, it doesn't matter what you build, eventually it's going to come crashing down. Absolutely. And I got to be in a space where I see it and I understand it, and I'm also having a level of awareness to say, if we're going to dig, we got to set some parameters of how we're going to dig because we can't just come in here and just start messing stuff up. Because if you mess up this one fossil, you have, you, you run the risk of damaging the entire find because this one small bone, (laughs) when you think about when you go and see dinosaurs that have been reconstructed based on the bones, one small bone could be the difference in the stability of it and, and, and it not having any stability. So once I start digging, am I qualified to go here? And that's two women, we gotta figure out if, if, you, if you're qualified to, to dig there. If this is a space where I may wanna dig, but I may need to go, I need to, need to go learn how to dig first. Mm. I may wanna dig, but I need somebody to teach me how to dig first. <laughs> right. Because if I start digging with the wrong tools, mm. I could mess everything up. Yeah. So. First of all, these analogies been crazy tonight. They've been going live. It's been crazy <laughs> Yo, tonight. Uh, we got a, we guy. got quite a few super chats in. Shout out to Kimberly Moore. She says these are my favorite guests. So anointed and full of wisdom of God. Please have them back more often. I like that. Shout out to Kim. Shout out to Nora John again. She said, please believe that wives are leaving marriages that lack intimacy. Plus all the other problems. We need connection, not want. That's right. I like that. True. I like me. Listen. 
Yeah. I like me a woman that needs connection. True. <laughs> I like Absolutely. The way he said woman, though. Yeah. yeah and listen, <laughs> and listen, y'all listen. For the people that stayed this long into the episode, you about to get blessed because these brothers got something very special coming that we got. Look, we, we waited all the way. The people that want to dig all the way to the end of the show. Come on. All right. If you got, if you excavated all the way to this point, <laughs> you done found something special. So, fellas, tell the people what y'all putting together. Yes, sir. Damn, well, we I'll just excited. say the date. April 27th in Atlanta. Yes. Woo. I don't care where you are, what you're doing. If you're married, you're single. Men. So, we're highlighting men for this event because we're actually going to be honoring men in a fantastic way. Uh, it's really, really special. So, um, you'll hear more about it. But the men of the city and even around the United States, we're going to be honoring over a hundred men at this event. Wow. So we want people to make sure they're there because it's going to be special like no other. Could you explain a little bit more? Yeah, man. So the event is called we need to love. Yeah. And uh -huh. it's, it's a space where we are ending the gender wars. It's going to be spaces where we're coming to heal hearts. We're going to have some real open, honest conversation. We're going to do some interactive panels. We got live music. Yeah. We got a chill and connect after party. It's going to be a space where people can come and bring their issues that yeah. they've had with the opposite sex. And we're going to really dig to the deep of it. Uh, we're going to really find out the roots. And then we're going to create spaces where we can love and affirm one another. And it's going to be this ceremonial moment where we're just going to wash our hands of the issues, the pain, the trauma. There's so many interactive elements of even how we're going to do something at the end of the night that's going to alleviate all of the a lot of this pain and the stuff that we've been carrying. Because we want people to be able to connect on the foundational basis of clarity, of having healed hearts, having a perspective and godly insight that can create lasting relationships. So we want you to come we, if you're single, if you're married. This is a space for all of us. The event is is going to be in Atlanta. Yeah. And we, 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 we don't have an unlimited amount of seats. We want this to be uh, big, but also intimate. So we, we have a certain amount of tickets that we're actually releasing. So when those are gone, those are gone. So we want you to be here in the city, in Atlanta. Join us for a place where we can heal for real yeah. and connect on a, in a very real way. We want our Holly initiated brothers to come on down. We might, yeah. you know, even, if y'all are free, man, we want y'all to put y'all on We tired program. of seeing y'all on the screen. Yeah, man. We <laughs> want y'all in, in person. in person. We want you like in that. person. Yeah. So we would love, we love for you guys to come rock with and us. And that's, that, that's in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. That's Saturday, April we went ahead. We, did we drop the link here? Yeah, yeah. I just dropped the link, guys. Listen, I'm going to pin it to the top of the chat. So y'all go ahead and make sure y'all register for that event also in the description really yes. anywhere that you you look you're gonna see this link you're watching the replay guys i want y'all to go in the description and go ahead and get your tickets a sap that's not first of all these are some incredible brothers and they do incredible work and they are whatever you think they are watching through the screen they're 10 times that in person i, I and i can attest to that so if they putting something together you must be there and big shout out to y'all the brothers it sounds like the brothers gonna be yes. up in the building too let's yeah. go so shout out to let's the brothers. go we're gonna we shut the city down yeah. real quick dr it. izzy chiming in with and she's just letting us know how she appreciates it she says wow yes. this has been enlightening and such a blessing i think i need some more digging lessons oh, hold on, okay wait, hold on, wait. There, there, <laughs> <laughs> hey slow down there baby all right slow down there you know, a, but that that's a good one how to how what's some tactical ways to to dig yeah. and, right. and yeah. get everything that you want to get out of your man i yeah. think that's a real true skill set we're gonna cover that yeah yes. i like april that 27th yep I april 27th y'all man i'm very excited about that yeah hype 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 very hype we got anything else in there ryan no that that was a, that was the last one i uh i'm just making sure that i'm pinning it to the top because the link again ladies and gents it is in the description and in the comments and in the chat. Well, listen, we're still well over a thousand people in here, man. So y'all go ahead and take action on that here. And I want you guys to be uh, joining us here. For those of you who don't know, if you're still under a rock, every Monday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m., guys, this Wednesday, we're going to do something very incredible because y'all have been asking us so much for the brother to come back. We bring and listen, the brothers are on the set this week, all right? We asked, actually got Pastor Brian Meadows, who's coming back on the show, Come on. and he's actually going to be doing something crazy. He said he's going to do something crazy he's never done before. He's talking relational witchcraft on this Wednesday. 
So it's about to get very, very heavy yeah. on the hardly initiated platform. So y'all make sure y'all tune in this Wednesday because it is going down, y'all. And I mean, did, did you acknowledge it's Valentine? Did you oh not? Did you God. did you acknowledge yeah. that? It's Valentine's Day. It's Valentine, Day. February fourteenth. Oh my goodness! So if you if you listening to the show on that evening, then you, it's official. Harley initiated. Ryan and Tyshawn is most certainly your Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> so we gonna make sure that we have your flowers, the candles, everything that you need for you to enjoy us on that very special occasion. It's gonna be Valentine's Day, y'all. Shout out, man. Honestly, I really didn't acknowledge that. That this upcoming Wednesday is Valentine's Day. <clears throat> and y'all see me and Ryan, we ain't here, look, we ain't here giving it to y'all. Yes. <laughs> hey, shout out to the initiates. Y'all are my Valentine this year. And I, I just really appreciate everybody that just continu continuously just invest in the platform. Again, you guys liking, you guys subscribing, you guys supporting, you sharing the videos to your people and your family. It means so much. And I ask that you continuously support us. Because again, we're going to continuously bring guys like this, of this caliber, to you. Because this is what the world needs right now. Among, like, like what you said, in this gender war, yeah. mm -hmm. we need soldiers like this on the front lines, educating every single one of us, especially in our community. If you know, you know. But other than that, man, Ryan, you got anything else for the people? Because, I mean, we, this is, I just we second, gave him a show tonight. Yeah, I just second what you said. Because the support is for real. Shout out to Ryan Hollins, my my, my boy, and also, uh, you know, our friend and also a fan of the show. Came in Facts. town with Houston. Uh, Houston Rocks was in town. Yeah. We went to a nice brunch. Oh, nice. You know, we we connected. You know, it was at Marcus Bar and Grill. Shout out to them. Treating us well. Sat us in the back, so it was real exclusive. Yeah. And I don't know if y'all know Ryan Hollins, but he's seven foot, by the way. Seven wow. foot, bro. He's so, a spectacle. And yeah, he's a spectacle. Ex-NBA right? player. Ex-NBA, right? So we talking to Ryan. I'm like, damn, Ryan. I'm like, man, we sitting here in the back. I'm like, you seven foot. I'm like, all these people going to be looking back here for you. <laughs> And he was like, no, no. He was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they they it's, it's, they looking at y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ty walk out to the buffet for the first time. Yo, when I tell you, whole take, we taking, it was a photo shoot. Wow. wow. Y'all got to get out late, more. It, we got to get out no, more. We, we don't yeah. get out. It was yeah. incredible. We don't. It was, we, yeah. At the line of the buffet, we taking photos. Multiple people from tables is coming up to us. It was, I I have never felt like that in public. It was, it was <laughs> real <laughs> strange. It was. And keep in mind, my boy, he's seven foot now. Yeah. Wow. Right. right. Then, of course, it, then, of course, it Everybody taking photos, having a good time. We end up going to the Hawks game that night, right? Uh -huh. Ryan treated us out to the Hawks game, Hawks and Houston Rockets. We walking around to the concessions. We get pulled over by a guy who run the concessions. He like, yo, listen, meals on me. I, did, <laughs> I love the show. Come on. I just want to tell you all about the situation so y'all can give me some counsel. Uh -huh. So the whole, right. go out for a drink after that. Again, run into somebody, a bartender, loves the show. Wow. For, it was like. I'm like, yo, this is amazing. I'm like, we celebrities. All though. in one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All in one day. For real, All in one day. But the thing is, the love that people show, that would really let me know that we have an impact. Wow. Yeah. Right. And it, was, and it was not just women. That's the thing. It's like, because I love the ladies. But yeah. when my men approach us, that's something when I'm like, different. okay, it's yeah. something different. Right. So this entire weekend was amazing. Shout out to Ryan, like I said. But it was amazing because... The support that we received in person so guys continue to send the emails continue to do the things that uh tyshawn stated it was a phenomenal experience phenomenal experience yeah phenomenal and i want to thank you brothers again for you know coming up on here and blessing the people just like you do i want to encourage everybody else again to please take action do not wait do not be on the other end of not being able to get one of those tickets to be in the environment, in the presence of not just these brothers, but everybody else that's going to be in that room. Yes. Sir. And again, this Wednesday, y'all know what it be, baby. Valentine's Day, you were Harley Initiated. Harley Initiated. We are out.